Over 400 games of NHL experience for this grizzled veteran Terry Yake. This afternoon, looking for his second consecutive Allen Cup championship with the Southeast Prairie Thunder. They're the home club and trying to go back to back against the opposition this afternoon, the Bentley Generals, who have had a dynamic tournament this week in the offensive zone. They'll look to continue that here today. For over a century, the dreams of amateur hockey players from coast to coast become reality here at the Allen Cup. It is over! The Bentley Generals are Allen Cup champions! The Southeast Prairie Thunder have won the Allen Cup. Today, the tradition continues as the two best teams from across Canada challenge each other again for a chance to add their names to history and hoist the Allen Cup. Steinbach, Manitoba is where you'll find us here this afternoon. We're about 40 minutes southeast of Winnipeg inside the T.G. Smith Arena. The Centennial Arena is a beautiful complex for hockey. It's old time hockey here today. Good afternoon, Brian Munns and Jamie McLennan with you for the championship that's been being handed out since 1909. And Jamie, you saw these clubs battle last year. From what we've seen this week, it should be another outstanding hockey game. Outstanding hockey, and yes, you're right. Bentry, Bentley Generals are looking for retribution against the Prairie Thunder. This will be an outstanding game here this afternoon. Both teams will be motivated. Round robin play began on Monday, and as we take a look at the standings, it was split into two divisions over the past six days of competition. The Southeast Prairie Thunder under head coach Brad Purdy believe they played just okay. Thought they played one of their best games yesterday in their semifinal win. While on the other side, the Bentley Generals have been almost untouchable the entire week. They opened up the event scoring eight goals, and their head coach, Ryan Tobler, believes that they have an opportunity to try and get the job done here today as the province of Alberta looks for its seventh Allen Cup championship. Semifinal action yesterday, Bentley knocking off their opponent, the Shellbrook Elks, in the first game, and the Grand Falls Windsor Cataracts, who have traveled the longest way to get here to Manitoba, came up a goal short. Their hearts were broken with about four minutes to go, and Dane Crowley scored the game-winning goal to advance the home side into this national championship. Jamie, as we get ready for this afternoon's game, the Bentley Generals come in. They won the Chinook League in Alberta, and they've got a club that uh, has a lot of star power, and they're pretty big, too. Absolutely. A guy named Matt Stefanishin is a key cog for the Bentley Generals and their success. He's big, he's strong, he has a lot of uh, East Coast League hockey experience. He's got the big shot. Six goals so far in this tournament. One power play goal, one game-winning goal. He's a guy that Bentley will rely on offensively to try and deliver them the Allen Cup. He's a terrific player, and he uses that size and strength in the corners to try and separate himself from the, de the defenders. He had a natural hat trick in the first period of their first round robin game, and uh, boy, everybody was all of a sudden looking at number 37 saying, who's this guy, and what's he going to be able to do over six days of competition? The guy, though, that he has to beat is Steve Christie, and he's been really, really solid for the Prairie Thunder. What's impressive for me about him is, yes, he's made a lot of saves, but he also handles the puck extremely well, and that helps with exiting the zone defensively. The D know how to read off of him, and he's been able to do that calmly with tremendous poise, and I like his positioning in the net. He doesn't go chasing the puck. There's not a lot of holes in his body, and this guy is going to help him out a lot. Terry Yake, I played with him in St. Louis. He's got tremendous hands. He's very smooth with the puck. Yeah, he's getting a little long in the tooth, he told me before the game. says, I don't know if this may be my last one, but I tell you what, this is a difference maker. He's got a terrific shot, and when you rely on that type of experience, he's going to be able to bring that, and he will definitely help the Southeast Prairie Thunder compete in this game. He told me after the game last night he's about 99.9% .9 sure that here inside the T.G. Smith Arena these fans walking in may be seeing him play for the final time today. The 2016 Allen Cup from Steinbach, Manitoba is brought to you by Esso. The Esso brand has fueled Canada's love for hockey for over 30 years. By RBC, let nothing get in the way of your someday. By Nike, official gear of Canada's national hockey team. And by TELUS, 
the biggest fans of Canada's biggest game. The 2016 Allen Cup from Steinbach, Manitoba is brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Standing room only this afternoon here in Steinbach as we get ready for the 2016 Allen Cup Championship. And let's take a look this afternoon at the starting goaltenders. Starting goaltenders, as always, proudly brought to you by Chevrolet Find New Roads. Steve Christie and Thomas Heemskirk were both spectacular yesterday, allowing just one goal against in each of their semifinal wins. As a matter of fact, that man looking for his second consecutive championship a year ago against this Bentley Generals club. He stopped 26 of 27. Heemskirk plays for a national championship, Jamie, for the first time. Well, he played extremely well yesterday for Bentley. And you're right, looking for the, the Allen Cup to take home back to Alberta. Cowan and Robertson on the opening faceoff, and we are underway as the Generals take it off the opening faceoff. Inside his own zone, moving it ahead is Craig. Broken up at the center ice red line, and that one will head over the glass just 10 seconds in. The head coach of the Southeast Prairie Thunder for the first year is Brad Purdy. And Brad Purdy has extensive pro hockey knowledge and, and a background as well. He's going to help his group try and settle down here early in this game. Here's a steal. Huxley able to send one on goal, and Christie's able to turn it away for the first time. In attacking Robertson, being watched by Smith. Robertson looking for Huxley, couldn't get it on his blade. Back in his own zone now is Blair McCauley. Huxley working down low here and working hard early as the Generals are trying to generate something and build a little momentum here against the Prairie Thunder, who are the home club here just outside of Winnipeg. The captain, Ryan Bonney, to McCauley, who will play it from center. That one goes too far for Cowan. In behind his own goal, retreating forward is Colton Hayes. He'll leave it for his defense partner, Donnie Morrison. Slashing of the puck, moving it down back in behind again. Handled here by Hayes, and he'll slow it down early. Good pace early on by both teams. You forget that both of them played yesterday and not used to playing in back-to-back -back situations, and we'll see how early on the, if the legs stick with the guys. Interesting to see as well. It's a small ice surface. We'll tell you more about that coming up in a moment as it will transition quickly from goal line to goal line, and this play is blown down. As a matter of fact, this surface, 187 feet long, 83 feet wide. I wonder how Ryan Tobler's team is going to handle that. Well, you have to coach to that. When you have no neutral zone, the neutral zone is a, a lot smaller than in traditional rinks. So what do you have to do? You have to advance the puck quickly, get in on the forecheck, and turn pucks over in the offensive zone. Yake wins a faceoff away from Robertson. Butland plays it along the near side. Dudar will chip it in deep, and this will be another icing call here against the Prairie Thunder. You talk about how busy the schedule has been and where there may be an advantage. Prairie Thunder are now playing their third consecutive game in three days, and one of their games was started after 10 p.m. due to a bit of a lineup controversy earlier on in the week. Well, you have to wonder how that'll fare on the guy's legs and a, and a goaltender like Steve Christie. Robertson shot turned away. Christie a couple of saves. Todd with a puck now trying to walk back out in front. That one came off his blade. He's watched there by Dudar to the line. Thurston's high riser, and that one's blockered away by Christie. Butland will take a hit. Robertson backhands it down, looking for Curtis Ostring. Midpoint, left wing side. Thurston through a maze. That one's blocked by Butland. Skating with it now, Terry Yates. There he is, 47 years old, clearing it in. Kalinchuk circles in behind his goal. Weller's after it. Knocked over there. In on the defensive play right now. Jesse Todd trying to keep the Prairie Thunder at bay. Kalinchuk near side to Ostring. Ostring watched by Yank. Ahead now, Tegan Moore, the former Brandon Wheat King, against Forsyth. Moore had the puck go out of his reach. Craig after it, overskates the puck. That one's kept in by Rigby. Crowley, the hero for the Prairie Thunder last night in their semifinal win. They'll get it out to center ice, but no further, as Deck will pump it right back in the zone. Forseth, rink wide to Crowley. Both teams feeling themselves, feeling the other team out a little bit early on, just trying to establish some pace. 
but make sure to have safe plays and you go back and take a look at some of the physicality and come around the net, try to advance the puck if you're Crowley. A little reverse check. It actually knocks the, the Bentley player down. Number 37, Matt's definition, but talking about the teams that played in back-to-back -back situations, you want to play a safe game early on, not have any turnovers and create odd man rushes against for your own team. Brett Robertson takes the face off away from Mark Agnew. Rob Smith floats it out to center. Agnew is there. Mike Hellier joins in on the attack for the Southeast Prairie Thunder. Deccan behind his goal, trying to alleviate his way to the blue line. Couldn't get it any further, though, as it's kept in. Along the wall, Sean Limpreich. One hands it, looking for Smith. That one comes right back out. Bonnie looking to chip it in. He'll put it on to Smith's stick. He's got Hellier going to the net. Rob Smith, an attempt through traffic. Heemskirk able to make his first save of the afternoon. First one that came in with some difficulty anyway, and now he'll hold on to that sharp-angled shot. Adam Huxley gets his first shift of the game, and we talked about him before the... We talked to him before the game, and he lost a couple jibs blocking a shot two games ago. Said it's pretty frustrating for him, but he plays with the heart on his sleeve, and he's a guy who has 10 years of East Coast League experience. Well, we've had an opportunity to watch a lot of this event this week, and it is, and I mentioned it in the opening, it's old-time hockey. Uh -huh. There are hits along the perimeter. There's been a couple of suspensions, and more than Huxley have lost teeth here today. They have left it all on the line, and now we're getting a chance to see who will lift the trophy. Scramble in front, top of the crease, they jam away, and able to clear it out of harm's way as Kyle Bailey. Up ahead they come. Big hit right in front of the Southeast benches. Ian Schultz gets stood up. That was a huge hit, and you talked about it, Munzee. A situation where last night the intensity was so high, guys were running around the ice and they were finishing their checks. Here, early on, the pace is a little bit slower, a little bit more methodical, especially through the neutral zone, trying to execute passes. Another collision there as Kyle Bailey's knocked over by Dan Tetro, and right at the blue line, it results in an offside call. Talk about some big hits early on. Tetro finishing his check over the blue line, and he's a big man, and you have to establish that type of pace. Tries to chip it wide, just closes on Schultz. Good, solid check. It's not a dirty check. Schultz knows it's coming, and then a, a good push in the neutral zone. Standing up, separating player from the puck. And that's what the, the type of physicality you need early on in a game. Tetro's a fourth-round pick of the Montreal Canadiens back in 1997. Brett Thurston looking, will deal the puck down in behind the goal. Moore couldn't find it. Crowley will. Up on the left side to Plett. Joined on the forecheck here. Callan Wild and Steph Patin looking for the game's opener. Generals play it off the near wing side. Kept into the blue line. Plett trying to find it out of his skates. He'll pull it there for Patin. Patin will backhand it down in behind the Bentley goal. Plett first man in after it. Wild as well and unable to stretch there is Forseth. Rigby run out of real estate by Crowley. Long giveaway. Robertson trying to drop it off and unable to control is Nathan Deck. Dudar in with a possible three on two. Plett to the goal. Dudar can't get a shot away. Rigby skating out now with Deck and Todd. They'll head off on a line change. Jesse Todd, the lone man that stays in, forces the Thunder to move it here. Up the near wing side to Yake, put it into the skates, able to control it though, is Jared Walker. Back for the puck is Craig, he gave it away, Dudar. Down on the end wall, looking far side, Walker. Open in front, Dudar takes it back to the blue line and Smith, Smith will put it up high, hit his own man Yake, that shook him up. Backhand, Heapskirk able to keep the left pad down and keep this a scoreless hockey game. Just over five and a half minutes into this 2016 National Championship. Southeast Prairie Thunder were 2-0 winners over this Generals Club a year ago. And Ryan Bonney was the man that was able to lift the trophy. His Thunder right now out shooting the Generals early by a 4-3 margin as Hayes runs into Agnew and the Thunder are guilty of icing. Riley Dudar is gonna get an outstanding chance as it's gonna be a three on two through the neutral zone to get kicked wide. Good positioning right here. He's going to kick it wide. Now he's going to 
want that puck back down low. Nice little feed. Tries to go forehand. And Craig with a good defensive play as Dudar can't convert. It's a dangerous chance early on in this first period. Agnew to face off against Robertson. Agnew wins it. Butler around the wall. Looking for a limp right. He'll chip it. Agnew has problems with it. Hellier will knock it down. He scored the first goal for the Prairie Thunder yesterday in their semifinal victory. Got the joint jump, and boy, the fans have had some fun this week. And as you can see around the perimeter, it's standing room only. There's only stands on the one side that our camera positioning is from. They are absolutely jammed. Robertson will lay it in. Tetro skating back for it. Robertson runs his man over as Butlin goes down. Hellier takes a check from McLeod, and here come the Thunder. They're two on two. Limpright, there's a penalty up coming to Bentley. Limpright takes it down low. Extra attackers now on the ice. Hellier gets knocked over by Huxley, and Mike Hellier is shaken up on that collision with Adam Huxley. It has been a physical affair, to say the least, early on here today in Steinbach. This is what everybody signed up for, rode the bus together for, battled all year together for, okay? I say let's leave it all out there tonight and give them our best game. Okay, fellas? Yeah. Proud of what we've done to this moment? Well, let's show them who we are, the Bentley Generals, hey, fellas? Yeah. Hey, okay. let's go. All right. All right. Ryan Tobler, the head coach of the Bentley Generals, and Jamie, his club is shorthanded for the first time. Well, you'd be chasing a little bit, but their penalty kill has been strong throughout this tournament. 3 for 24, 87.5% running. Dittmer on the man advantage, trying to shovel it home as Cowan, he scores! Traffic at the side of the goal, and Del Cowan is able to get it by the netminder. And for a team that had only one power play goal on 27 opportunities this week, they get a big goal here today. Well, it all starts with winning a draw and then getting possession off the draw. Popped back right here, good work. Now it's going to get thrown down low. Watch Cowan get available, tries to step out, and it actually bounces off a stick on stick over top of the goaltender left shoulder. Now watch here, right there, up, down, over top, and just touches the back of goaltender Heemskirk and slides in, drops in for the lead for the Prairie Thunder, and they're pretty excited about it. It's a good, sharp play off the draw. The Prairie Thunder have a 1-0 lead. Cowan and Dittmer able to get in tight, and they are gonna give it to Dittmer, as a matter of fact, for his third of the week. He was the last player to lift it in, so it's 1-0 for the Southeast Prairie Thunder. Another chance quickly, Kalen Wild on goal, and the stop is made by Hameskirk. That's a good push right after the goal, but let's take another look at it. Good power play set up. Nice little play to take it to the net of Cowan and it drops right down and Dittmer jamming away it at the last second as the goaltender had lost sight of it and it slides right inside the inside post, the left post for a power play goal. Dittmer can score his last year with the Brandon Wheat Kings in the Western Hockey League. He had 32. So he's able to get one here today, Patin. Keeps the pressure on as Heemskirth will set it up in behind his goal. Out to center ice, Crowley. Turning with a puck, looking, avoids Rigby. Thurston will skate back for it. Wild is right in on top of him. Generals with a three-on-three -three attack. Tegan Moore is there. Stephanishan knocked off balance. Thunder. Maybe possibly getting away with an interference call there as Stephanition was looking for a call. We'll continue five on five. Yeah, did they ever get away with him? There's a little bit of a, a left jab into the face of Stephanition, and he immediately looked over to the refs for a reaction, but the ref wasn't biting on it. Slams his stick as he sits down on the bench right now. Club back to five on five play. Don Morrison, the 32-year-old, weaving his way out. That one at the skates and is played right back in by Jared Walker. Heemskirk will leave it there. Morrison with a puck. Moves it up to the red line. Into the attacking zone. Snaps it on goal. Pad save is made by Christie. Yate. In along with Walker. He'll hesitate here at the line. Now he loses it to Huxley. Huxley will play it in. There's a penalty coming up. And after giving up 
a power play goal against the Bentley Generals will head to work for the first time five on four. Adam Huxley's going to draw that penalty. Turns the puck over. Terry Yeg gets inside the offensive blue line. Turns that puck over. Huxley gets on his horse, tries to move his feet through the neutral zone. Terry Yeg still has him tied up. And then you go back to the, the non-penalty here. Here's a little forearm shiver right here. A little pop to the face. This definition does sell it a little bit, but you're trying to draw a penalty. And right now, Bentley gets an opportunity to go to the power play on Terry Yeg's hooking penalty. Bailey, Rigby, and Schultz up front here on the Bentley power play, joined by Deck and Thurston on the blue line. Puck along the far side boards on the penalty kill. Agnew and Crowley trying to move it out. They can't. Centering feed. Rigby shot just misses down low. Rigby along the far side. Puck comes out, and it ends up here in the Southeast Prairie Thunder bench. Good puck movement early on here on the power play, and this power play is 2 for 16, running at about 12.5%. What you need is crisp puck movement, almost one pass and a shot towards the net. Christie hasn't been tested much early in this game. You have to wonder how he is going to settle into it mentally and physically. So I look for Bentley to try and simplify their power play and try and get some shots and some traffic in front of him. Bailey took the face off away there from Patin. Cleared in by the former Raider, Nathan Deck. Generals have to retreat here, and Deck will skate back for it. Ian Schneider will quarterback the power play. Up ahead, they burst in on the far wing. Bailey working against Forsythe. Wild will chop at it. That's kept in. Schneider has it locked. Doesn't let it go, though. Deck on the left wing looking for Schneider. The one-timer. That one goes off the leg of Kalen Wild. Wide of the net. Schultz. Exchanging positions here on the power play. Deck the recipient now. Bailey gets the puck back. Top of the circle down low. That one jumped over the stick. Schultz trying to corral it. Bailey again looking as the five on four continues for the Generals. Looking for the tying goal and they find it. Out of the corner, the Generals able to capitalize and both teams have a power play goal. And both teams with favorable bounces. This is going to hit Rigby. Carter Rigby's leg in front and bounced over Christie's head. But it's set up in front, down low. Bailey's going to throw it to the goal line, and it's just a seam play, and it's going to hit the left leg of Rigby and slide into the net past Christie. A little better angle of this right here. Roll your wrist, hits the left shin pad, and Christie unable to come up with it. And we've got a 1-1 tie, both on the power play, both deflection goals that goaltenders didn't have much chance on. Both teams only were able to combine for three power play goals <laughs> over five days of competition. Oh, it's sh shaping up to be a special teams battle. It is indeed. McCauley over skates the puck now on the left wing. Ostring will play it in from center ice. That one's knocked down by Christie and behind his goal. He likes to play the puck kind of Marty Turkowish. He's an extra defenseman back there. Something that the Prairie Thunder have been able to use to their advantage. Play broken up at center ice. Robertson didn't see it coming. Here comes Cowan. He's got McCauley. Dittmer going to the goal. He scores! They know where to go. In fact, door, it's a lead right again for the Prairie Thunder. And that's three bounces on all three goals. But it's smart play through the neutral zone here. It's going to be a three on two. Going to kick it wide, and good things happen when you go to the front of the net, and that's exactly what happens. Right off the skate of the defender, Hayes, as he throws it seam for his teammate, and this is just terrific work. You know that there's somebody driving hard to the net. No chance for Heemskirk in net as that just slides into the wide open net, but we'll call that a favorable bounce, but that's just a, a strong executed three on two in theory and then you get the favorable bounce on the back door. They're giving it to Tyler Dittmer right now, his second of the game. McCauley picks up one assist. Tuxley keeps the puck down on the far wing. Back to the blue line now. Deck to open ice. Tetro, the body there on McLeod. Big hit in the corner. And an interference penalty is coming up. Adam Huxley is going to make his way to the penalty box. It looks like Mark Agnew is okay. 
teams are perfect on the man advantage so far. Southeast Prairie Thunder of their second opportunity when we come back to Steinbeck. Obviously, we started this journey on Monday with a certain path in mind. Over these last few days, we had a couple of detours, a couple of roadblocks, but our destination never changed. One of you guys gets to be the hero today, and I'll let you guys decide who that's going to be. All right, let's come up with a good effort. Let's get ready to go here. Brad Purdy's club with a chance on the power play again after a good speech. Great speech. It makes me want to strap the pads on and try and be a hero today. Great work. And a lot of times it's motivational speeches before the game. Coach can get you fired up. He has the ability to do that. And that was a terrific words from the head coach of the Prairie Thunder. You're telling me on the physicality in this one so far, you'd rather be down there than up here? Nope, not at all. <laughs> We're comfortable up here. A little cold, but comfortable. We've got to thank Paul Dick, the head coach here in Steinbach of the MJHL Club, brings the heater out of his office and gives it to us for a nice fee of two hours. Well, I have to uh, apologize because I've been hogging it, but I'll tell you what, yes, full marks to Paul Dick. Long attempt, Dittmer can't get it. As the puck goes out of his reach, that's an icing call here on the power play. And we'll see a face-off back in Southeast Prairie Thunder Ice. You're looking for that long stretch play. You can sometimes catch the defenders sleeping if you can have a forward slide in behind him, and that's exactly what happened there. You saw Tyler Dittmer try and split the D, and the pass was just off, or else he would have been in alone. Generals on the penalty kill, able to rag off some time here. Terry Yake comes back with it now, wearing an assisted captain's aim. Agnew's got it to limp right at center. Taking it wide left around Thurston. He'll bounce it in behind the goal. Robertson's on it. Agnew. Kalinchuk in the corner. Yake as well. Five players now trying to work this thing free, and Yake's got it. Shovels back to the line. Ryan Bonney's wrist shot through a maze. Knocked down by Heaster. Agnew holding on to it. Back to Bonney. The return feed. Agnew rink wide. Tetro skates to the circle. That one's blocked by Kalinchuk, and it caroms outside of the red line. And in a very small neutral zone here, the Prairie Thunder will regroup. That's the biggest adjustment in this game today is the area in between the blue lines. Well, it helps if you get some speed and some semblance through the neutral zone. You're right. If you have a quick regroup, you can enter the zone immediately because of the size of the neutral zone. Dal Cowan, who has two assists in the game, sends one towards the net, save is made, and then Morrison erases his man on the near side as McCauley goes down. And it's all about in your own zone exiting. This is just a terrific pass here through the middle with speed. Now what happens, you're allowed to cut right to the middle. And that's a great A opportunity that Heemskirk has to be sharp on and he fights to corral the rebound. But good speed, head up the whole way, pushes the defender off, creating a great A opportunity just to, through a smart outlet pass out of your own zone. 22 seconds remaining in the power play here for the Prairie Thunder. Cowan lost the face off to Robertson. Hayes plays it along the wall. Butland is able to keep it in. He'll walk the line. He let it go. And now one ricochets off McLeod. And he's able to bank it down the ice. Strong play by McLeod to get in the lane to block that shot. And then press the puck up ice to kill. Precious seconds off the penalty kill. McCauley hits the Bentley line. He'll take it outside on Morrison. Loses control though. And Kyle Bailey will get it to the red line. Dittmer who's got a pair in the first period. Rolling puck goes down. They wave off the icing call. Teams are back to five on five now. So the Southeast Prairie Thunder, one for two on the man advantage. Here comes Morrison to Bailey, right on net. And it's gloved down by Christie. Steve Christie was the best goalie this week and had to make another good stop here. Well, it's a transition play. Bailey throws it towards the net through a bit of a screen. Christie slows the play down. He's able to track it, rip it out of the air with the glove, get the whistle so that his team can regroup and go, go at it from a face-off in their defensive zone. Had a strong career at the University of Manitoba in Canada West Hockey. A couple of years pro, and then now it's just playing for fun. Heemskirk at the other end of the ice isn't going to take any chances here as he'll hold on. Well, you talk about playing for fun, but both... All of these guys on the ice have that fire and passion. That's why they still play at this level, and it's a very 
competitive level. And we talked about it last night, you and I sitting here watching the game and how the emotion and the intensity and these guys' bodies must be banged up because they're taking hits, receiving hits, and then having to go right bat it, back at it again. Some of them aren't used to doing that in, in today's life, but com competitive juices are flying and they're going for an Allen Cup today. Well, the age difference is 22 to 47 in this game. Chance for Tegan Moore, and Christie's able to turn him away. Moore with it again. Forsyth has it from his skates, knocked over by Rigby. The former Kelowna Rocket in the left wing corner, turns it over now, and Plett will break out. He's one on two, trying to wait for help, and as he gets bumped by Deck, has to find the puck, and now he'll play it in as Rigby and Plett collide for a second time. Patin knocks his man Deck on the end wall. Long feed, far wing, here they come, a chance. And Stephanishin can't get around the last line of defense and Rob Smith. And we've got our fourth penalty of the game coming up. Southeast Prairie Thunder find themselves one for two on the power play so far. Bentley gets their second crack next. Tim Plett gets a hooking penalty in the neutral zone. And it's gonna be a nice outlet pass. Bentley sends Stephanishin up through the neutral zone. It's a terrific pass, and Plett just gets a, a hook on him right there. And he's going to get called, and we're talking about a special teams battle right now. Bentley gets an opportunity to try and even this game. Well, they're shooting 100% on the power play so yeah. far. They're one for one when Carter Rigby was able to tie it. Yake on the penalty kill will send it all the way down, and Heemskirk will leave it here for Nathan Deck, the 26-year-old. Quarterbacks the power play and he'll weave his way out to Schneider. Schneider's pass got as far as the line before Bonnie intercepts and he'll knock it down the surface. It's good work to stand up in the neutral zone by the Prairie Thunder. No entry available for Bentley. Schneider with it again looking to get around Smith. Schneider in behind the goal. Schneider all the way to the midpoint. Deck. Schneider left side and Schultz. Ian Schultz with some time here, into the corner. Back to the blue line now and Deck. Deck fakes his shot. Goes far side and Schneider. Schneider with some time. Couple of players line up right there as Hellier and Agnew close the lane. Eric Schneider still controlling on this power play. Deck to Bailey, one timer. That one ricocheted off Bonnie wide of the goal. Schneider ranked wide to Bailey. Has Huxley parked in front into the corner instead. This is Schultz. Schultz threw the crease and he missed. We've seen a few goals scored that way. Why not attempt it? Smith on the penalty kill. Being bothered there by number 55, Eric Schneider, who's had a really impressive first start to this hockey game today. A lot of ice time for the Calgary native. Schneider to the blue line. Deck with his head up. He'll wait. Back over to Schneider. Touch pass in Bailey. Left side to Deck. Deck shoots. Christie with a toe save. Deck on top of it again. That went off the skates of his partner. Comes along the near wing side. Bailey has some time. Agnew blocks it there in between the face-off circles. Comes right to Deck. Schultz from a sharp angle. Stopped by Christie. The rebound. And as Huxley will jam away at it, Steve Christie's able to keep it on this side of the goal line. This is a real strong penalty kill by the Prairie Thunder. Tight diamond formation, blocking shots. Mark Agnew is going to front that puck, get it with his right shin pad, and then work it down low. You try and jam it towards the front of the net. They close. That allows Christie just to front the puck. Now Huxley's down on one knee, trying to jam it in. Christie's able to corral that rebound, but that's just smart positioning by the Prairie Thunder defensively on that kill to keep everything to the outside. Big hit right in front of the Southeast Prairie Thunder bench as Walker runs over his man and Hayes is given a little bit of verbal assault as well from the rest <laughs> of the players who are right there. Well, the boys are always going to let you know about it. Dudar all deflected into the low roof. And we'll have a faceoff coming up in neutral ice. Here's the hit that you're talking about. Gets everyone excited in the neutral zone. Right here, Walker's going to go right through him. Gets tripped up at the last second, but... He's a big man. He's like a lumberjack with that giant beard. Not messing around. You don't want to see this guy outside the, the rink. 
Six foot three, 210 pounds. He was a Chicago draft pick back in 2004. The Hawks took him in the seventh round. Dane Crowley skates up with it now. Able to sneak it in between a couple of players and Huxley and Robertson. McLeod reverses it back over to Hayes. Under three minutes to play now in the opening period. Home side, the defending champions with a one goal lead. Forsyth to Butlin. Middle of the ice and Dudar. Huxley's all over him. Dudar is going to take it back in deep. Huxley, the former Saskatoon Blade. Can't keep up with Dudar there. Forsyth comes in. Puck came off the rolling stick there of Walker. And an odd man rush for the Generals. Robertson, though, can't stretch far enough to keep play on side. And a faceoff coming up back outside the blue line. That was a three-on-one situation that you end up putting yourself offside. And, you know, that's a mental mistake. You're, you've played a, a long week. And, you know, you got an afternoon start here. Here you've got a situation. You've got to advance that puck to, so that your teammates and your line mates can come across that blue line together and what happens they get ahead of you you don't move the puck cost you a three on one chance offensively deck puts the puck off the skates of Cowan and there he is Del Cowan with a couple of first period assists in the game so far to give him five points this week it's been a strong game so far for both organizations obviously special teams have been the story of it five on five play has been pretty even Graham Craig back for the puck with Dittmer in his back pocket. Dittmer's got those two goals that Cowan had the assists on. Now a wrist shot from Butlin changes direction just wide. Cowan hit there by Deck. Dittmer pulls it free. McCauley ran into his man and here come the generals three on two. Robertson hits the line, he's got Todd. Takes a shot, he scores! Jesse Todd ties it at two on a quick snapshot, feeding Steve Christie. Wow, this is great transition here by the Bentley Generals, and it's going to start in their own defensive zone. Support all over the play. Take a hit to make the play. Pop it out, three on two. Robertson slides it over to Todd. Todd has an option on the back door as Graham Craig had jumped up into the play. He looks him off, two on one situation, and slides it between the wickets of Christie, but. That starts in your own defensive zone. That's good defense translating into an offensive chance that ends up in the back of the net, and the Bentley Generals have tied it two all. Fourth of the week for the 29-year-old from Calgary, Jesse Todd. And we're down to the final two minutes now here in the opening period, so it's been a crazy start. Power play goals, one by each club, and then a even strength marker to reply, and we've got ourselves an even affair right now. Well, I talk about support in the defensive zone and then through the neutral zone. That is a terrific play, a three on two situation for Todd to come across. Now it's a short five foot pass. He's in on a two on one and then fires it five hole. Here's a steal, Limpray trying to get around Thurston out in front of the goal. Can Agnew get a stick free? No, he can't. Shot down the ice and cleared. As Kalinchuk will get it down and Christie will come out and play it for Rob Smith. Smith up to Limpright, bodied there by Bailey. Schneider plays it back to Bailey. Schultz is with him on the left wing, gets the pass. He'll chip it in. Christie around the wall. Morrison unable to keep it in. It went over Rigby's stick as well. And as Hayes goes back on it here, the Prairie Thunder will make a line change. Under a minute remaining in the opening period of this 2-2 hockey game. Here come the Generals. Left wing side, Moore trying to play it around the blue line. Wild can impede him. Stephanition. Side of the goal, Rigby working for it. Backhand, Christie the save. Traffic is there. They continue to whack away, and Christie is able to stop it and keep us tied at two. Platt slaps at the puck, and it's out to center ice. Morrison shoots it right back in, but that's a delayed offside against the Generals. Well, this is great work here by Bentley as they've got a shot in the arm and some energy offensively. Working the puck to the front of the net. Rigby's going to take it from forehand to backhand. Christie's forced to make one, two, possibly a third save there. As Bentley's all over him, he bends but does not break as he keeps it at 2 nothing or 2-2, two, two, tied at 2-2, two, two, hopefully heading into the first intermission. Play tied up off the drop. 
McCauley trying to get away. That's Cowan who fell down. This line is res the three that have been able to get all the offense going. Crowley pinches down. Off the sidewall, it comes out to the blue line. Forseth has to wait for his mates to get back on side. Rims it around the boards. Hayes just holding on to it here. Players ready to rag off. This period here, a little bit of pushing and shoving in the end, and we're not quite done yet. Some, yeah, not happy people here as finish check, and there's some jawing after. Here's what happened. Puck's going to get chipped out. Wants to finish a check. And he gets the stick up high. Then there's a response right there, a little jab. A little congregation afterwards, and we'll have to see if any penalties are going to come out of this at the end of the period. 17-15, the shot's on goal after the opening period in favor of the Bentley Generals who erased an early deficit. We're going to talk to the captain of the Generals coming up momentarily. It's the Allen Cup live in Steinbach, Manitoba. Season, more than 100 teams take to the ice with hopes of playing at Canada's National Female Midget Championship, the ESSO Cup. Premier marketing partner of Hockey Canada, Imperial Oil is proud to help the growth of women's hockey across Canada. Visit hockeycanada.ca slash ESSO Cup. As we bring you back to Steinbach after one period of play, it's a 2-2 hockey game, and the captain of the Bentley Generals is kind enough to join us through 20 minutes of play. And Boy, what a hockey game we've seen so far. Power plays weren't much during the week for both club, but they have been today. Yeah, you know, uh, both teams have great power plays. I mean, there's been three pretty bad bounces go out there, but that's how it goes, you know. You get those opportunities and they're hard to defend. So, you know, both teams want to stay out of the box and see how that goes from here. The week for your hockey club, an opportunity to redeem yourselves after a tough loss a year ago. Was this almost the perfect matchup coming in here today? Yeah, in the back of my mind, I kind of wanted them to win for sure. Um, we had a great battle last year and you know we worked so hard to get back here and I think it's just fitting that we get to play them in this barn and uh, great crowd great turnout so it's it's going to be a fun it's going to be a fun battle and we're looking forward to it. Brett appreciate the time all the best. Thank you very much. Well for the last 107 years the top senior men's hockey teams in this country have battled for this Allen Cup. Since 1909, teams from all 10 provinces, the Yukon and the United States, have lifted the trophy. And as you'll see here, the Allen Cup has had a long and very interesting history. When Frederick Arthur Lord Stanley of Preston donated the Dominion Hockey Challenge Cup in 1893, it was intended to honor the amateur hockey champion of Canada. However, as money began to corrupt the principle of amateurism, the Stanley Cup, as it came to be known, became virtually the sole possession of professional teams. As a result, the desire to honor true amateur competition led to the creation of a new challenge trophy in 1908. There was a league formed in Montreal called the Interprovincial Amateur Hockey Association, or Union, I think it was called. Some of the guys from Montreal went to Sir Henry Montague Allen uh, and asked for him to donate a trophy, and he did. Trustees of the league were determined not to let economics taint the amateur spirit of the Allen Cup. Therefore, outside of team expenses, all proceeds from the gate were donated to local charities. Champions of the Allen Cup were subject to the challenge system, whereby challengers would apply to a panel of three trustees for the right to play the champion for the cup. However, disputes over eligibility of participants and where and when challenge matches would be played threatened the Cup's very survival. On December 4, 1914, in an effort to bring some order to this chaos, the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association was formed and the challenge system was abandoned in favour of playdowns. The playdown system that was created created an enormous number of, of teams and leagues across the country. You had senior leagues everywhere and every one of those senior leagues had a champion and every one of those champions played in their region and the whole goal of that was to get to the Allen Cup. All these, these small centers were able to uh, have players come to town, settle into the town, become part of the town, give them jobs and yet at the same time play hockey. A perfect example of such a community is Trail BC, a mining town in southern British Columbia. The Trail Smoke Eaters are not only two-time Allen Cup champions, but they were world champions as well. Five on Allen, 
It became tradition that the Allen Cup winner would go to the Olympics. And then when they started the World uh, Championships a few years later, they decided that they would also send the Allen Cup champion to play in the Worlds. The final Allen Cup champion to conquer the world, the 1961 Smoke Eaters were also Canada's last world champion for 33 years until the drought was broken in 1994. Over the 100-year history of the Allen Cup, the faces have changed, the format has changed, and even the prize has changed, as in 1993, the original trophy was retired and replaced with an identical replica. And like the plaques honoring Allen Cup alumni who went on to great NHL careers, the original trophy itself and memorabilia from its history take their rightful place within the walls of the Hockey Hall of Fame. Jesse, to Jesse Todd has us even at two. Forty minutes southeast of Winnipeg is where you'll find us here today. The city of Steinbach, Manitoba. They have the trophy right now. The Southeast Prairie Thunder won it a year ago out in Clarenville, and it's been a wild opening 20 so far, Jamie. It certainly was a wild opening 20. The first three goals came on the man advantage here. Good, strong work here by Cowan. Dittmer's going to get credit for that first goal as it chips over top and slides behind goaltender Heemskirk. It's just a strong play down low. Now again, power play opportunity for Bentley. Throw it towards the net, good things happen. It's gonna hit the left shin pad of Rigby and go over top of the left shoulder of Christie into the back of the net for the 1-1 tie. Slide onto the power play, another situation. Good work here in the neutral zone. Take it through the middle, pop it wide. You've got an option on the back door while it hits a skate of Hayes. It's a smart play on the three on two situation. Throw it towards the net, you get a favorable bounce and it slides right into the open net. Now this is support in the defensive zone. Take a hit to make a play, three on two, it's gonna slide right in the middle for a Todd. Todd has an option on the back door for Craig. Looks him off, rolls his wrist, five hole through Christie, we've got a two two game. So chances on both sides, great work. Now you've got an opportunity to go into the second period tied. Pair of goals from the former Brandon Wheat King, Tyler Detmer. He's now too shy of the Bentley Generals. Number 37 we will keep an eye on him for the final 40 minutes. Matt's definition has six in three games so far. The 2016 IIHF Men's Under-18 World Championship continues on Monday when Canada faces off against Slovakia. Live coverage begins at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific across the TSN network. Allen Cup, the 2016 championship. Nothing has been settled so far here today. It's standing room only. It's been an unbelievable week. We've got to thank all the organizing committee, the volunteers that have put this thing together. And right now, the fans have not been disappointed. Now, the brand of hockey, the, the excitement in the city, it's been outstanding for everyone involved. Nicely underway here as the puck went over the stick of McLeod. Trying to work it in as McCauley. Dittmer's on the ice, who had those two first period goals. Cowan as well. One time chance from a sharp angle. McCauley's turned away. Forsyth shot just missed. Crowley keeps it in. Cowan working for it in behind the goal against Craig. Skating after it now is Robertson. Watched by Dittmer. McLeod will backhand it. Onto the blade here and Nathan Deck will lead the charge. He shoots that one ricochets off Dane Crowley and it goes off the low roof here inside the T.G. Smith Arena. Good push early on here by the Southeast Prairie Thunder. Pop it out right to the slot. It's gonna get a good shot and it's a bad angle. But Heemskirk forced to make a good paddle down save. Now you've got traffic in front on the follow-up shot, but you need that type of offensive zone pressure. Create that triangle and hammer it towards the net. Create some secondary opportunities. Patin ties up with Bailey off the drop. Schneider, who's a defenseman, we've seen him down deep a lot back in the opening period. And right on the doorstep there is causing some issues for Christie, who's able to find it through a maze of players. Christie does a good job of absorbing that shot from the point, but you're right, there's a maze of players. What we're seeing early on in the game is, early on in this period is, 
throw everything towards the net, get a lot of bodies there, and try and create some confusion and get in the goaltender's eyes. Another shot from the line, didn't get through as Wild will play it out to neutral ice. Broke it up back here on the Southeast Prairie Thunder line. And one player was just caught in the offensive zone, and there's a whistle. Boy, the linesmen are sharp right now. They're <laughs> getting some grief from some of the players as that could have been left as a, a, a tag up offside, but it's forced back into the neutral zone on the other side. Ryan Tobler's a little curious on the situation here. Yeah, we have seen some excited coaches, or excitable coaches, in this tournament. Especially last night, there was a lot of penalties being called, and, and both coaches were quite animated behind the bench. Tom Coolen with the Grand Falls Windsor Cataracts had everybody on the edge of their seat for a while <laughs> as their game was wearing down, and they had their hearts broken with about four minutes to go, and Dane Crowley scored, and brought everybody to life in the building. It was a 1-1 game for a long time, a really entertaining game. And the Southeast Prairie Thunder obviously win to keep rolling here, what you're watching right now against the Generals. Nobody home at the blue line to keep it in. Hayes from center ice tried to play it in. That went right off the stick of Jared Walker, who's got to go to the bench and grab a new one. Heemsker plays it for Hayes to Schultz. Up ahead to Moore, he's got Rigby with him. No one touches it for Bentley there as they were making a line change. Otherwise, they would have got called for too many men. Dudar turns it over there. Stefanishin comes back. Here's a three on two. Stefanishin shoots and a rocket just sailed high and wide. Boy, he can let that thing go. Did he ever? Christie didn't track it until it was by him. Dudar leaves it for Tetro. The trailer. Here's Yates through a maze and he can't find the goal. They're going end to end now as they open it up here in the second period. Rigby's long attempt. Karam's off the leg, wide into the corner. Trying to center there is Thurston. Rigby pushed by Forsyth. Yakin to help out of the play. Four players jarring away at it. Tegan Moore is going to back off, and this allows Dan Tetro with some time. Up to Walker. Now in Yake. Two on two with Dudar, and he was offside as just ahead of the play is Riley Dudar. Terry Ake puts his line mate offside. And you take a look at some of the picks from the Prairies here. These guys have uh, a lot of experience at the National Hockey League level or being drafted into it, at least the minor league level. Terry, La Terry Ake leading the charge with just over 400 National Hockey League games. Ryan Bonney played a couple cup of coffee with the Vancouver Canucks. And Dane Crowley has a lot of experience in lower levels, but Pretty impressive uh, lineup there. Guys have been called to the carpet in the draft. Well, and that's what makes this event so much fun is all of a sudden they bring that pro mentality back into the game here and they get those competitive juices flowing. And we'll talk to Terry Yake coming up after 40 minutes. And he was telling us yesterday just the passion that's inside that locker room makes it so much fun. And that's why he continues to play. And we're going to see a power play coming up now. There's going to be an interference call. And the third man advantage of the game here for the Prairie Thunder. Ostring's not happy about it, but it's a pick play. And that, you could set it up right here. Ostring tries to run right there on Agnew, a little pick. That creates a little separation for his line mate to get towards the net. It's a good call by the ref. He tries to challenge it a little bit, but it's certainly the right call. It's clearly you can't challenge it. The video evidence proves conclu conclusive that that was a penalty. Prairie Thunder, one for two on the power play today with three shots on goal. Their power play goal opened the scoring back in the first period. Dittmer's first of two when he got some help from Del Cowan right along the goal line. Here comes Blair McCauley, and Cowan steps into a shot. Heemskirk's able to stop it. Had to react quickly to a hard slap shot there from the 27-year-old. It's a good zone exit. Starts right in the defensive zone, but speed, kick it wide. And you move it at the right time. Now Cowan has a head of steam down the wall. He gets a good shot towards the net. And you can see Heemskirk in good position to soak up that initial offering. But that's just a, a terrific exit out of the defensive zone by the Thunder. And they get a good opportunity towards the net. Bailey takes it shorthanded away from Cowan. Held in by Crowley. Cowan with it again. Into the left corner, McCauley back door, couldn't put it onto the blade of Dipper, who was looking for his third of the day. There was an option there too, he tried to jam it, it just missed. 
These three have been really good in the Ozone, and Heemskirk doesn't like the way it's looking right now around his crease, so he's going to stop it. That's a smart play by the goaltender. Slow things down. You can get set, try and win a draw, get it down 200 feet or 180 plus feet in this building. A little smaller ish, ring, ish. ish ish area, but kill off precious seconds on the penalty kill. And that's a sign of a goaltender that was feeling good about their game, confident and confident in their centermen to win that draw just like this. And you get it all the way down. Regulation ice, of course, 200 by 85. This surface here we're watching today is 183 by about 82 and a half. So the neutral zones are tight. Now you certainly do notice it. I mean, especially being in the building, how small the rink is through the neutral zone. Terry Yates sets up Tetro with a rocket from the line, and that one missed. Limpright pulls it out of the corner. Into the corner for Yates. Agnew paying a price in front. Slap shot there by Limpright, and Heemskirk's able to get his blocker on it. Ryan Bonney, the captain, to his defense partner, Tetro. Top of the circle in Limpright. Watched by Moore on the penalty kill. Got it away from him. Limp right with it again. Morrison with that quick stick. Back to the line. Tetro. Left side, Bonnie. Side of the goal and Agnew. Pressured by Hayes. Bonnie with it again. Trying to get it to lay flat. Tetro to Bonnie. Three games with the Vancouver Canucks in his NHL career. Limp right. Back to Bonnie. He'll wait. Tetro blasts it right on goal. And the save by Thomas Heemskirk. Good offensive chances here for the Prairie Thunder. Moving that puck around. Terry Yake's going to put it on a tee. Goes wide, but try and get the, the bounce off the boards. Now, that's a laser beam stepping right off, forcing things towards the net. And then this third opportunity through two potential blocks. And Heemskirk is able to front that and make a real good save and corral the rebound. Patin to face off against Bailey. Butlin's got it off the draw. Platt, bouncing puck, Patin let it go to Butlin, has problems with it, floats it just wide. Schneider trying to get there. Crowley's on it first. Crowley for the Southeast Prairie Thunder wearing jersey number eight. Walks out in front, open chance, and he missed! What a chance for Dale Butlin, and he missed an open goal in the other way. Here comes Schultz shooting, and Christie's making the save on that one. Oh, did he miss a wide open four by six, and he's frustrated as we show him heading to the bench to take a seat as he gets chirped by the other bench, but it's a nice walkout play out of the, out of the offensive zone off the goaltender, Heemskirk, and you can see him with the wide open net. Now, he heals it a little bit, tries to front that. If he would have actually skated into it, gone yep. backhand to forehand, he had enough time to put that into the open net. He tries to force it and ends up going wide. Has one goal this week. It was a short-handed marker during round robin play. Puck down along the end wall. Here's McLeod trying to work it. Looking to go back to the blue line to Craig. Goes into the corner to Huxley instead. Left side, Kalen Wild to the blue line. And that one goes off the Bentley bench. And we'll see a faceoff remaining inside General's ice. Well, and it's a, the Bentley Generals dodge a bullet there. Heemskirk was down on the initial save. And it's a wide open net. You get a little bit of luck on that play. That's what you need sometimes to go the other way and try and get some opportunity. Here it is again, another look at it as he just tries to convert that and misses it by mere inches to put his team up 3-2. Walker loses the puck on the near wing side. Adam Huxley shot it wide, high glove side on the netminder, Christie. We got bumped at the side of the goal and as a word for the officials. Tetro off balance. McLeod will run into him. Dudar will take it now to Yake, and here they are, three on three in a 2-2 game. Terry Yake, left wing side, feeds it, looking for foresight, take it away. Huxley around the boards, took a weird hop off the partition, comes right down, and a bouncer from Yake missed the goal. Foresight through traffic, shot it wide of the goal. Yake back in behind, watched by Deck. Yake trying to put it through. Graham Craig will now have a little bit of time here. Get it off to Tegan Moore. That's picked off by Dudar, and back into the... Southeast Prairie Thunder Zone as we've played just over six and a half minutes now of the second period. The Prairie Thunder have had the better of the chances. I know they've had a power play opportunity, but they, they've been able to create a lot of offensive pushes just like that. 
but they're unable to convert. Cowan setting it up. Smith shoots, pad save, Heemsker, puck is there. And it's played safely into the corner by Deck. Deck and Craig getting a lot of attention here. The two defensemen for the Bentley Generals trying to keep these white jersey Prairie Thunder away from their goalie. Bonnie, far wing. Smith tees it up, and that one ricochets wide. Cowan paying the price in front. He got cross-checked by Deck. Now Dittmer in front, knocked it out of midair, right into the glove of Heemskirk. And we've got Stefanishin and Cowan getting up from each other. <laughs> Old-time hockey oh, continues here in Steinbeck this afternoon. <laughs> Nothing settled so far today. Motions have elevated here in the second period as the Prairie Thunder had a couple good pushes towards the net. Stefanishin behind the net, a little slew foot. So you follow it up with a little one-hand chop just to let everyone know you're still here, but I don't know what you call this. We call this uh, schoolyard rules. <laughs> like, kind of turn the blind eye a little bit, give you one and you receive one back, but. It hasn't really mattered since Monday, the way the power plays were going for most of the teams in the event, and all of a sudden now, Brad Purdy and Ryan Tober, the respective coaches here of all of a sudden had some things bounce their way. We've seen power play goals by both teams today. Haven't seen anything though in the second period yet, score-wise, as we remain even. Todd's got one of the goals back in the opening period. Can't work it towards the net. Crowley back off the left side to limp right. He'll hit the general's line, trying to get outside on Robertson. The captain Thurston feeds Todd. Head up to center ice now. Robertson backhands it into the skates of Ostring. Chipped out of the line by Agnew. This should be an icing call against the Thunder, and it is. Dane Crowley, the hero yesterday in the semifinal. 29-year-old Winnipegger was a Tampa draft pick back in 2006. Gets to play close to home with 428 remaining yesterday. Was able to keep his club alive. Kalinchuk shot, didn't get through. Bailey in behind the goal. Working with it here, quick shot by Schultz on the doorstep, didn't get anything on it. Platt will play it off the wall now to himself and he'll wheel out three on four. Long shot from outside the blue line and that one goes off the stick of Schneider out of play. Bentley hasn't had much offensively, but they get the puck in the offensive zone behind the net. Good set up here by Schneider, Thru slide it out. Little double hit there by Schultz as Christie had a tough time tracking that puck. The initial offering right here, up, down, slides just wide, but Bentley hasn't had sustained offensive zone pressure all period long as the Prairie Thunder have carried the play, but as you pointed out, Munzee, it's still a 2-2 tie. Shots are 7-2 right now in this second period in favor of the Prairie Thunder. 22-19 right now overall in the game. Oh, hard hit there along the wall as Wild runs over McLeod, and he's slow to get up. Kalinchuk, left wing side. Plett comes in after him. Chopping the puck is Huxley, and Tetro will skate back for it. There will be some ice bags yeah, once yeah. this game and <laughs> tournament wraps up. Puck at the side of the goal. Christie covering up that post. Dudar. Leaves it over and Tetro will survey, float it up the gut. That one's given away and Greg will keep it inside the attacking end. Right back out, Butlin looking for Plett. Deck takes over. Deck trying to get away from Yake. Has to circle back in behind his goal. Terry Yake will join us downstairs coming up after 40 minutes as Crowley takes out Rigby right in the neutral zone. Stefanishin throws an elbow on Forseth. And the tempers are starting to flare here in the middle stanza as Rigby gives it back to Crowley. You're right, tempers are starting to flare. Flair, Crowley goes to step up on Rigby and gets enough of him. Rigby stays down and then... You're seeing some physicality right after the whistle as Stefanishin is getting into it with foresight. But here's how physical it's been all day long. Guys fin finishing their check, standing up on the play. And they're not going down easy right now it's been an interesting day on both sides because you could argue that 
maybe the refs could call a few more penalties here, but it it would actually even up on both sides because both sides have played with that edge and chippiness and not happy with each other. If they were going to call everything, we'd miss supper. <laughs> that is true. We don't want to miss supper. Cowan, McCauley, Dittmer, top three on the ice again here in the offensive zone for the Southeast Prairie Thunder who have had a lead twice in this game. The Generals have been able to come back on both accounts so far. Bonnie shot from the line, glove down, and Thomas Heemskirk is going to grab all that one again. And you're halfway through the game right now, and you've seen some good saves from both goaltenders. You've seen some good offensive zone play. Special teams have been a, a story. Now you've got to settle your, your team down. You can't get too emotional because now what will happen, the refs will start to make that borderline call. They'll make the retaliatory call, and that could come back to bite you in the end to try and win this Allen Cup. Cowan to face off against Bailey. Generals win it. In behind his goal, Morrison played it left wing side. Puck comes out. Bonnie retreating for it. Angles it there to Rob Smith. Smith playing with an upper body injury. Had to miss one game during round robin affair. And he's back onto the ice now. Cowan throws it to the front of the net. That one's picked off. Played safely by Thurston out of the danger zone. Hayes in behind his net. He and Morris in the defense, but right now. Schneider will turn it over left wing. Bailey will skate well them. Schultz joins in as well. Tried to go rink wide, and that one didn't happen. Here's Morrison. Puts it off the side of the goal, and our back referee out in the neutral zone is going to call something here. Looks like it's going to go to the Bentley Generals. Power play for the Prairie Thunder next. Offensive zone penalty here by Schneider. So he's going to grab a stick, trying to create a lane. Not happy with the call, but clearly right here, he's going to get inside position, takes his free hand and grabs it. That tries to open up a little bit of a lane for the puck to go towards the net, and he gets clipped. One for three, the power play for the Prairie Thunder here this afternoon. They have seven shots on goal. Crowley's going to wheel back in behind his own net and set up the breakout. Long feed intended for Limpright. He'll chip it in from the blue line. In behind his goal. That one's rimmed by Robertson. Kept in by Smith. He's the one who had his stick held. Limpright. Yake and Agnew also up front here on the power play. To the line, kept in. Smith to Crowley. Rolling puck right into the glove of Heemskirk. Good play to slow things down by Heemskirk. Again, puck gets separated, thrown towards the net. No screen in front. And he's going to take, take his chances on his centerman winning the draw and getting it down 183 feet. Thomas Heemskirk playing for the first time here in the Allen Cup Championship. The goaltender here with the Bentley Generals. Curtis Muka is his backup. Graham Craig trying to look at it and clear it out. Can't do it. Limp right. Gets some help from Smith in the corner. Four players trying to work it free. Agnew and Craig come in as well. And Craig's able to cross-check his man and get the puck. And he'll shoot it out. Crowley flips it over. Smith skating ahead with it. Agnew stretching to stay on side. Can't do it. This allows the Generals to get it out. As it's shot down by Bailey. Terry Yates. Power play continuing here. We're halfway through. Far wing side. Crowley with Limpright and McCauley up front. Yake heads off on a line change and the Prairie Thunder for a short time were one man short. Well, Crowley goes to throw it back to the D but he didn't realize that Yake was changing so he ends up back in their own zone. Cowan gets knocked over. Penalty killing right now. Moore and Robertson up front for the Generals. They'll try and get a change in. They can't though. Bonnie plays it in from center ice. Morrison goes back. Hayes his defense partner. Let it go by him. Taking more to the line. Bonnie failed to keep it in. And Dale Butland will skate back here, playing for his hometown team in Steinbeck. Power play with just under a half minute remaining in it. Butland clears it in. Morrison back for it. Cowan goes there as well. Hayes will fall down on the end wall. Puck is lifted high to the line. Kept in. Butland. It bounces over to McCauley. McCauley checked by Hayes. Shooting it down the ice is Huxley. Right back up, though, Butland. 
inside the general zone as things happen quick here on this small ice. Forseth has a little bit of time now. Dittmer plays catch with him. Then they lose it in between the blue lines. Cowan will keep on the attack though. Cowan floats it. That one goes off the skates of Kalinchuk. Schultz with Schneider. Schneider works it here against Tetro. Schultz for the puck. Forseth is there. Gets away from the attack here. The Generals run into and Schneider hit his own man on the play. And shaken up and behind the goal is Ian Schultz. Schultz was looking for a penalty, but it was his own guy that hit him. Yeah, Schneider finished the check. Platt trying to cut in, and Kalinchuk made the play in between the face-off circles. Now there's a penalty coming up, and we're going to see a cross-checking call. Looks like it's going to go to Ian Schultz, who retaliated after that collision. Well, Schultz is behind the net. Schneider runs through Forsythe and actually runs Schultz over. Schultz thinks that that is Forsythe on the... His own man got him from behind. It was his own man, and then he cross-checks him, so it's a bad penalty. We talked about special teams, especially down in the stretch here. Refs are going to call everything, and you got to be a little bit more disciplined in your own zone. Fifth power play of the day for the Southeast Prairie Thunder. They scored on their first chance back in the opening period. Dittmer's first of two. Here's Agnew. Side of the goal. Yates trying to lift it over a man. He does get it to the side of the goal, and Heemskirk will cover up on that low corner and get a face-off here to his stick side. Prairie Thunder trying to work the puck down low and jam it towards the net. That's how they had success earlier in the game. Agnew's going to throw it down to Yake. A little bouncing puck. He tries to slide it back door. It's closed off. Good paddle down here by Heemskirk, and he's able to slow the rebound down and grab it for the whistle. Craig over to Robertson. Slap shot, tried to clear it out. Smith held it in. Agnew's got it in his skates. Moore is there, and the former Brandon Wheat King will relieve pressure. And Dane Crowley at the side of his goal will move it quickly to Yake. Yake put it off a leg, and it hit Robertson right out of play. That pass to Terry Yake in the neutral zone, it works, but Yake is standing still. He's stationary on the play, so the only option he has is to try to distribute it. And he's going to try, try and throw it back through the middle. It hits a shin pad and go over the glass, but a lot of times you want motion on your power play so that you can advance the puck. He's standing still, so he's easy to defend because you can close and limit his time and space. Especially on the smaller ice too, exactly. right? Exactly, there's no neutral zone, so you gotta advance that puck, but you have to have your feet moving. Robertson trying to get around, Butlin hesitates here on the penalty kill. That killed off a few seconds. Cowan now making his way. Shoots it from center right in on Heemskirk, and he's gonna glove it. As we're down now to 71 seconds remaining here in the power play. Take a look at assistant coach Chris Mason from the Bentley Generals. Extensive National Hockey League career and as a starter and a backup in Nashville, St. Louis, Atlanta, and Winnipeg. And one of the most popular players here this week. Yes. And he's not a player from his <laughs> time here in Winnipeg with the Jets is why everybody wanted to see him. He's out kissing babies, shaking hands. We're trying to get a conversation with him. We're in a queue. <laughs> embarrassing but he took stitches in the tournament last year seven stitches in the the eyebrow said he 20 years or close to 20 years of pro hockey he never took stitches as a goaltender comes to the tournament he's not paying attention on the bench and cuts his eyebrow for seven working nashville predators television getting ready for the stanley cup playoffs when he gets back down to music city usa tomorrow what a start we've seen to the nhl postseason Dittmer, working on it now, trying to cut his way in front, and he gets drilled right on the doorstep by Moore. Cowan looking to center. That one jumped over his stick. McCauley is there. Moore will take it away, and he'll clear it down on the PK. Couple good looks by the Prairie Thunder to try and jam it towards the net. Heemskirk strong on his post, paddle down play, and then gets his help from his defenders to clear that puck out of harm's way. Here we are on the final seconds on this power play, and Limpraid was in offside. Eek the puck carrier. Speaking of uh, goaltenders, Chris Mason, yourself, would you have liked this look back in your day? No, never. I, the backup goaltenders, it is a, 
a rule, right? Hockey yeah. Canada needs everyone to wear a, a helmet on the bench. I would have wore the mascot's head or something. I would have gone a little <laughs> bit off the board, but wearing a helmet with a visor when you're a backup, I don't know. It just seems a little bit unnatural. And Safety you, first. You do, and I get that, but you don't. I would probably would just, just would have worn my mask to let everyone know, hey, I am the, the goaltender of, available in case there's an injury or a poor play. In case the coach looks down and yep. wants to make sure he knows exactly where you are. <laughs> exactly. They usually would catch me eating a hot dog or something if I got a little hungry during games. Did you ever have anything in your glove? Oh, always. I had some. I got caught in Montreal one night by... My head coach, Joel Quinville, I had a hot dog in my glove, and uh, the Come camera on. caught me, and <laughs> he had a little chat with me. Man conversation in between periods uh, at the underneath the, in the coach's room in, at the Bell Center. Nice. Here comes Bailey, fakes a shot, rests it from long distance. Christie, with no problem, is able to hang on to that one. Nothing's been settled as we continue the second period. There he is, Curtis Muka. Steinbach, Manitoba is where we'll hand out the 2016 Allen Cup here this afternoon. And a champion from a year ago has made his way from the players' side of things back in behind the bench. We mentioned the Bentley Generals earlier on. Chris Mason and his staff. There's Justin Kurtz, who's now an assistant with Brad Purdy. Well, it's nice, uh, you know, to transition. I know guys want to stay involved. They may not want to play. Either the body's not there or the mind's not there to get involved. And... So you help out in the assistant capacity, so it's exciting for him to try and go for another Allen Cup. It takes it off the faceoff, comes forward with it. He's got Walker with him. He's got Dudar going to the net. He tried to get it far side, and Yake just got drilled away from play by Moore. Back in comes Dex. Stick check, chance out in front, just missed Graham Craig. Stephanie cross checks Dudar. And play is stopped. On a delayed offside. What a chance. Yake's not happy with a rough treatment. No, not at all. Here's the rush by Bentley. Try and chip, chip it wide. Good defensive play. Try and throw it back door. Now, Christie has been forced to make any tough saves in this second period, as Bentley really hasn't had a lot of offensive zone time or chances. Five on five, and I would suspect that that's something that they need to address in between the second and third is Try and get some pace back to their game and, and try and push to get ahead in this game. Just six second period shots for the Generals right now. 24-23 for the Prairie Thunder in the game. McCauley keeps it in. Trying to extend that lead in the shots department. Trying to get their lead back. McCauley and Detmer working there against Hayes. Walking out, McCauley low shot. That's a good save with Heemskirk. Able to keep the low half of the ice covered up. Held into the line by Butlin. Morrison snaps it off the wall. Butlin will keep it in. Played it into the corner. That one went over the stick of Cowan. Morrison tries the other side. Kept in by Tetro. Cowan and Hayes for the puck. Hayes will trail his man. Clears it high through the air over everybody's head. And this will be an icing call against the Alberta champions. Thomas he Heemskirk has been the story for the second period for the Bentley Generals as he's given his team an opportunity. McCauley's going to get a good look, a little stop back play. Forehands it on the ice. Heemskirk with the paddle down, takes away that lower part of the net. Now you get a push here as off balance Cowan is. Hayes gives him a good push. Bouncing puck off the blocker of Heemkirk. Goes out of the danger zone again. Thurston run into there, and he's shaken up. There's going to be a penalty coming up here. And the Generals will have their first power play in the second period for sure. You can see that Brett Thurston is shaken up, and it's stop back play. Callan Wild just squished his head. Yeah, and Callan just, or Wild just... Stops back. But you have to be responsible. And I know the numbers are facing you. Thurston also has to be aware that he has somebody on his backside. And when you stop back and try and get underneath a hit, things like that can happen. You hope that he's all right. And in Hockey Canada rules for this event, Jamie, he's done for the day. 
Yeah. That's going to be a hit to the head. Callan Wild has just gone underneath us, and he's gone back to the Southeast Prairie Thunder locker room. It's an unfortunate play on all sides because you're starting to chase up the play. You want to cut him off. Durson over actually, actually over skates it, takes a swipe at it. Wild goes to finish him. It's going to be a two and a ten. Okay, so he will be able to come back into the third period. Are you taking a look at yeah, close to the end of the period, so that's probably why he exits. He'll be out of the game, though, for the next 12 minutes. And the Generals, who are one for two back in the opening period on the power play, will go to work. And here they come, Nathan Deck to Bailey. Bailey turns it around the boards. Christie's going to come out and play it himself. Round the wall, Schneider's unable to hold the line. And Deck will skate back. He's got Patin right behind him on the PK. Prairie Thunder have scored three shorthanded goals this week, so the Generals will need to be aware of that. Setting up now on the power play, Schneider. Left wing side, into the corner. Schultz got it to his man, back into the blue line now. Deck fakes his shot. Schultz on the far wing. Side of the goal, trying to walk out in front here is Bailey. Bailey avoids treatment from Crowley. Stefanishin. That broken stick didn't seem to bother him. Now he gets it out of the way just in case. Bailey and Schultz will play catch with it. Deck watching down in front. Rigby's in front of the goal. The fifth player on this power play. Deck far side to the assistant captain. Shot from Bailey. Missed the goal. Eric Schneider keeps it in. 40 seconds remaining in the power play. And Agnew will shoot it down the ice shorthanded. As we are under a minute remaining now in the middle frame. Strong work on the penalty kill. Kept Bentley to the outside. There was no real dangerous shots put towards the net because of the positioning of the Prairie Thunder. Christie is going to clear it out himself all the way down the ice. Graham Craig on the power play. Last few seconds here of this middle frame. We've seen no scoring in the second period so far. All the goals back in the opening 20 minutes. Here's Hayes trying to get around Yates. Rubbed out by Bonnie. Smith hits Ostring. Hayes for the puck. Stefanishin looks to fish it free. Unable to do so. Play still back in behind the goal. Down to the final 15 seconds. Teams are back to full strength. Moore continuing with pressure right now. Ostring and Stefanishin are on the ice with him as well, trying to get their first lead of the game. Moore in behind the net. Can he wrap it around? No, he can't get to the front of the goal before the horn sounds. And Jamie McLennan, 20 more minutes remain in regulation time for this Allen Cup championship. It's been a strong period by both organizations. Now the message will be, hey, win a period, win a cup. It's a 2-2 game. All the goals were back in the opening period. It's been a battle so far for the cup. We'll talk to Terry Yates next. Every year, players compete for a chance to play at Canada's National Midget Championship, the TELUS Cup. As the biggest fans of Canada's biggest game, TELUS is helping the hockey stars of today and tomorrow. Visit HockeyCanada.ca slash TELUS Cup. It was an even affair after 20 minutes of play, and that's where we are through 40 in Steinbach, Manitoba, the 2016 Allen Cup Championship. And here are the Southeast Prairie Thunder continuing to battle, led by the grizzled veteran. Jamie McLennan and I have uh, coined you with that here today so far. What a game. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite an active game, actually. There's a lot of hits out there. Uh, the ice makes it really tough to make plays, so there's guys on you every time you touch the puck because they know you're probably going to bobble it. So it's been really difficult to make stuff happen, and uh, that's created a lot of physicality. Terry, your club was able to win it a year ago, and you wanted to come back and play here on home ice this year. Why? Well, I guess because you can. There's really no other reason than uh, to go out there and do something with 20 guys that uh, means a lot. We've had, last year we had guys stitches in their forehead, stitches in their face. We had one of our guys lose all his teeth this year. Guys give up an awful lot to come and do this, not just work related, but they give up their bodies physically. And for us to come together and do something that uh, means a lot is just what, is what makes it fun. Could be 20 minutes away from a championship. You told me last night it's about 99.9% that this could be your final game. Are you still on that number? Yeah, yeah, probably 99.99 uh, .99 now. So 
Uh, I want to go out, I'd love to go out a champion, and this is going to be uh, it's going to be a tough period. I know our guys will throw everything at them, and we'll leave anything on the ice. And if it happens, uh, it'll be wonderful. And if it doesn't, uh, you know we'll accept what we uh, we had and know that we gave our best effort. It's been a great week. Appreciate the time. Thanks for this. My pleasure. Thank you. Terry Yake looking to continue a championship trend, the 47-year-old veteran. And here's a look at some of the recent Allen Cup champions. Both the Bentley Generals and the Southeast Prairie Thunder have hoisted the trophy twice. Here's a look back at the last five gold medal games. Slap shot, tipped in front, rebound, scores! And Clarenville takes the early lead. And for the first time in a quarter century, the Allen Cup is heading back to the Rock. Moving it across the line, winding, waiting, now he takes, scores! Oh, there's a dagger right there off the stick of Anders Strom. It is a two-goal lead. The fourth time is in fact a charm for the Southeast Prairie Thunder. They are finally champions. Spins, fires, it's there for Desmond, he scores! The fourth line strikes again, 3-0 Generals. The Bentley Generals will celebrate a national championship, and they will do so in front of the hometown faithful. This is Roach, back to Fergus, holds it, wrist and he scores! We have ourselves an Allen Cup final tied at two. Here's Roa, shot, he the dot in front scores Mark Agnew on the one-timer and the Southeast Prairie Thunder lead it's one nothing can't stop that pass to Jerry Yates who lets a shot go they score Sean Lipright all by himself tips it in it's two nothing Manitoba for the second time in the last four years the Southeast Prairie Thunder have won the Allen Cup the 107th edition is over. It was all Manitoba from start to finish. A look back at the past and we continue to add to the history books. Nothing settled yet. We'll tell you more next. It's been a great week here in the city of Steinbach, Manitoba, 40 minutes southeast of Winnipeg. Springtime is in the air, and of course that means championships here on TSN. 20 minutes, maybe more, we'll have to wait and see. Through 40 though, Jamie, nothing's been settled yet. No, no scoring in the second period. There was penalties, left and right, both sides, very physical. A couple turnovers, goaltenders were very strong in making saves, and you know, no love loss. That's the thing, as, as you can see the end coming, you could see the intensity ramp up, and there were some retaliatory plays. Schultz takes a hit behind the net, comes back with a cross check there. That cost his team two, two minutes against. This one was a borderline penalty, and then a two and 10 for this play. As Thurston was hit from behind, he stopped back on the play and got his head crunched against the board. So we'll see how the intensity ramps up this period and who's gonna come out with the Allen Cup. Southeast Prairie Thunder have been able to go ahead twice. The Bentley Generals have been able to equalize. The final 20 minutes of regulation time are coming up here at the TG Smith Arena. These fans got to get back quick into their seats. Third period's next. The road to the RBC Cup is a long one. As a premier marketing partner of Hockey Canada, RBC supports teams in their quest to reach Canada's National Junior A Championship. For more information, visit HockeyCanada.ca slash RBC Cup. The 2016 IIHF Men's World Championships begin Friday, May 6th, when Team Canada takes on the United States. Coverage begins at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific on TSN 1 three and four. All the goals were back in the opening period. Thunder outshoot the Generals in that second frame. If you are Bentley, 
Jamie McLennan, how do you try and generate a little bit more here in the third period and try and get their first lead of the game? Well, how, they have to be better in their own zone, turning pucks over and advancing the puck. A couple times their defenders have held onto the puck too, too much and haven't advanced it into the neutral zone to gain some speed in the offensive zone. And shoot off the rush. That's the one thing you've got to test goaltender Steve Christie. Now, he was sharp in the second period, but wasn't pressed into massive duty. He made a couple solid saves, but he didn't have to make those grade A, high quality chance saves against. So if you're Bentley, you've got to keep your feet moving. Maybe draw a penalty here or there by having somebody haul you down, but dig in here and that's the, that'll be the message from both coaches. Win a period, win a game. Both teams were right down to the wire in yesterday's semifinals. The Generals, 3-1 winners over the Shelbrook Elks. Prairie Thunder knock off the Grand Falls Windsor Cataracts by a 2-1 final. Here we go. Who will be the hero? Something Brad Purdy mentioned in his pregame speech to his team prior to game time. Nathan Deck works the puck here. The Generals number eight. Going to hang on to it now. Giving a little bit of room to work. Makes his way up to the blue line, and he drops it back for big Graham Craig to Adam Huxley. He gets bodied by Crowley. Huxley with it again. Slap shot pass into the corner. Too far for Robertson. McLeod behind the goal, taken away by Dittmer. And as the Generals make a change, Crowley will come out with it. Near wing to McCauley. McCauley to Cowan. His shot blocked. Rebounded front. Stop is made by Heemskirk. Good chances at both ends of the ice here in the first minute. Limpray trying to dance his way in, scores! Del Cowan assisted on the two first period goals, and he puts home his first of the tournament. Southeast Prairie Thunder with a 3-2 lead. This is a real strong move to the net. It's gonna be a turnover in the offensive zone. The initial offering, good save by Heemskirk. Now you've got an opportunity to get it out. That's a turnover right there, it stays in the zone. Limp right is going to drive hard to the net. Cowan follows it up and puts it in the net before the net is dislodged. But that's a strong power move. You see Cowan right there. The puck is clearly in the net before the net is dislodged. And Southeast Prairie Thunder have a 3-2 lead as they have a strong push early in this third period. A league champion with the Calgary Hitman in the WHL and a chance to play in the Memorial Cup. And we'll wait and see now, is he the hero here at the Allen Cup? Generals trying to come right back in. Long shot there from Kyle Bailey. And the stop is made by Christie. Take another peek at the goal. Little turnover opportunity, good stick. That, that turnover helps Limp right to get right towards the net. He takes a hit to make the play, and Cowan following the play. Nobody gets underneath his stick as he's able to Put that into the wide open net. No chance for Heemskirk on the play as he's run into by Limp right. It's incidental contact. Cowan follows the play up and now you've got a lead and see if you can hold on to it here early in this third period. Little ice repair by the Lions. Been working a game here today. Daryl Serminski and Kelsey Mahoney. And you heard Terry Yake in your interview say that, you know, the ice conditions... I mean, there's been a lot of games going on, so there are some bumps out there. The refs doing their best to, to make sure everything's good. But that being said, if you know that there are a couple rough patches on the ice, that's where you have to move the puck crispy, crisply, clean, cleanly. And that's where it comes down to it. Be sharp, that way you, you can advance it and you don't get caught in your own zone. It's been a busy building with the Allen Cup. Steinback Pistons of the Manitoba Junior Hockey League are still in their playoff series against the Portage Terriers. As a matter of fact, those teams will play tomorrow. Terriers, the defending RBC Cup champions, trying to wrap that thing up tomorrow in four. And of course, we're looking forward to the RBC Cup on TSN coming up in May in Lloydminster, Alberta. Or Saskatchewan, right on the border city. Here's Schneider. Trying to work it along the side. That one goes off the skates of Butlin. Agnew will turn it ahead. And he's got a little room here from the red line and he'll trickle it in on Heemster. Two minutes gone in the third period. For the third time in this game, the Generals looking to equalize. 
And the man that may be the one to do it is Stefanishin as he rips that backhand high and wide. He had six goals Stefanishin did in the first three games this week. On the doorstep, Deck couldn't get a shot away. And Plutt comes back now with Butlin, Dudar, and Patin. Here's Dudar in front. And the puck just goes wide. Dynamic plays in the offensive zone. And now Rigby runs Dudar from behind. Or pardon me, that's Plett. And hopefully Tim Plett is okay. As Tim Plett gets up as he gets hit from behind here. It's clearly a hit in the numbers. And you have to be careful of that as Rigby drives it. This is a four-on-one situation. It ends up on a two-on-one. Good play on the back door, but initially in the neutral zone, it was a four-on-one, and it was a nice little play by Dale Butlin to turn that puck over, and Graham Craig to turn that over to break up the play on the back door. Dissatisfaction right now by the Bentley Generals, but that was an easy penalty call to make. And if the numbers are facing you, you've got to find a way to slow up and not follow through on a hit. Here we go, sixth power play of the day. Generals find themselves shorthanded again. The Prairie Thunder, one for five. First goal of the game, Dipper's first of two was the power play goal. Nine shots so far on the power play. Skating it out with it now is Crowley to Cowan. Cowan will set up. Pressured there by Robertson. Find some room and Moore will just send it all the way down. Off the glass and Christie will leave it here for Rob Smith. He's got some time in behind his net. Generals making a change on their penalty kill. Here's McCauley to Dittmer. Dittmer holding on to it. Back to the blue line. Crowley drags to the midpoint. Top of the circle and Dittmer. Dittmer back to Crowley. Sets it on a tee. Shoots it wide of the goal. Yake one on one there against Morrison. Thurston comes in. Yake as well. Trying to kick at the puck as McCauley comes free up the wing. Tetro gives it to Dittmer. Back to Tetro. Wrist shot up high. Blockered right into the roof by Heemskirk. It's good puck retrieval by Terry Yake in the corner to win a battle physically. That helps keep the puck in the offensive zone. You get it back to the point. Now you can work it to the middle and get that shot on the net. Heemskirk gets a good look at it. He's able to control that rebound, but that all happens because of the work by of Terry Yake in the offensive zone. Bentley unable to clear that zone. Prairie Thunder with it. Tetro from the blue line had that one rocket into the corner off a knee. Tetro gets hit by Schneider. Centering attempt for Patin and it jumped over his blade. Bonnie to Tetro. Back to Ryan Bonnie, the captain of the Southeast team. Agnew watched by Bailey. Bailey and Deck on the penalty kill, not giving him any chance to work at cross ice, so they go down and behind the goal. Agnew rolls it. Tetro, Bonnie looking for a limp right. He's got it there, pressured quickly here on the penalty kill by Graham Craig. Big defenseman wearing number six in front. And as the puck will find its way towards the goal, Heemskirk will hang on again. Six years ago, he led the Western Hockey League with a 927 save percentage. And he's had a lot of work here again today. This is a solid save. It's a nice little redirection in the last second as he's able to shrink the body and hold on to that rebound. And we had a good angle. From our vantage point, that was going about two feet wide and it was redirected at the last second right into the body and he was able to control the rebound. First time this week, the Generals have given up three goals. Thurston tried his shot. That one goes off a stick again and it hits the roof. Shots on goal right now. Prairie Thunder 31, Generals 24. As the two sides are back to five on five play. And Bentley needs to continue to generate some offense, but what the Prairie Thunder have done is limited time and space. So they can't get on their horse. They can't get any momentum through the neutral zone and gain the offensive zone. Quick shot off the draw, goes over top of the goal. Taken into the corner by Crowley. Crowley working against McLeod. 
Robertson was in there as well. Some open ice. And Tim Plett, who is the recipient of that check that resulted in the power play moments ago, is okay as you see him right there, number jersey 21. Robertson and Walker hold each other up. Here's Huxley. Couldn't get it for Stefanishin. And the Thunder are back, three on two. Smith, wrist shot, blocked there, right off the leg of Stefanishin. Haven't said his name a lot in the offensive zone today. We'll keep an eye on Matt's definition. He's got it now, wearing 37. Navigates his way in across the blue line, and Rigby was offside right on the bottom of your screen. You talk about Stefanishin being a difference maker for Bentley. One thing that he has been a target in this game. Prairie Thunder have been all over him, trying to ag agitate him, get underneath his skin after the whistle, little chop here or there, and he showed some frustration in this game. He needs to relax and get back into his game and try and create some offense if Bentley's going to try and get back into this game. Sean Robertson to face off here against Del Cowan. Morrison will move it in. Butlin trying to get it off there to Tetro and get it to the red line. He does. Back in the Bentley half. Here's Morrison. Quickly playing it off back and forth with partner Colton Hayes. McCauley with three assists in the game. will set it up. Tetro McCauley on the doorstep. Backhands it just wide on the far wing. And there's a penalty coming up away from play. We're going to see a hooking call. Blair McCauley has been real strong in the Prairie Thunder today. Steps in, kicks it wide, now goes to the front of the net. Little redirection, and he almost has a wide open net. As Don Morrison does a good job getting underneath his stick. Captain Don Morrison, that's just terrific work defensively, but McCauley has been a force for the Prairie Thunder. The captain, Don Morrison, takes the hooking call. May have saved a goal right there, though. Some, sometimes you call that a good penalty because that was a wide open net for McCauley. Seventh power play of the day. They're one for six. 11 shots on goal for the Prairie Thunder so far. Crowley unable to keep it in. Here comes Schneider shorthanded. Shoots it wide of the goal. That one bounces. It's on the meshing in behind Christie. And as Crowley gets knocked over on top of the puck, we've got Bailey and Smith having words. And both of those players, very valuable to their respective teams. They will separate quickly and make sure they don't get penalized. I always hated as a goaltender the puck getting stuck on the <laughs> back of the net. You're wondering who's going to take it if you reach in and try and pop it off. And what happens? A lot of this stuff happens because everyone's trying to wait for the whistle. And if the ref doesn't blow it down, well, you play until the whistle goes and little irritability from both sides. Better than being stuck in your net though, wasn't That's it? That's true, I've had to pull quite a few out of the net in my career. Smith and Crowley on the back end of this power play. They've got Agnew up front along with Limpright and Yate. Here's Dane Crowley, shoots it into the corner. Skating back for it, Craig on the penalty kill. He and Decker, the defenseman. Bouncing puck comes to Smith. Smith being watched there by Robertson. Tegan Moore also shorthanded right now for the Bentley Generals. This is Sean Limpright, the former Moose Jaw Warrior, down to Agnew. Agnew pressured by Craig, sends it to the line in the slot. Crowley shot blocked and sacrificing on the penalty kill is Moore. Offside, Limpright was a step ahead of that rink-wide pass. What a block shot by Moore to get into the lane. This makes a big skate save. But it's good puck movement in the offensive zone here again by the Prairie Thunder. Go right back to the point. Crowley's going to have a clear lane and Moore steps right into it, paying a price. Good angle. Crowley just trying to get it down low as he has Terry Ake in front. And Moore steps in front, takes it off the shin pad. Face off win there by the Generals' Brett Robertson. And a little bit more time ragging off here on the Curry Thunder power play. They've killed off just about three quarters of it. 
Cowan ran into his own man, McCauley, at the blue line. Dittmer will track it down now. Floats it back to Tetro. Tetro playing it to Bonnie. Can he keep it in? Yes, he does. Cowan trying to go between the face-off circles. That one's knocked down the ice on the penalty kill by Alex McLeod. Christie's going to wrist it himself. And he catches Dittmer about 160 feet away. He was caught in no man's land. A lot of times when a goaltender wants to advance the puck, he can catch the defending team on the change. But what happens is both of his forwards don't clear the zone fast enough. Goes down all the way. Watch Bentley. Slow to change. McCauley wants to get out, but he realizes, oh, I better get available. Falls down on the play, tries to block it as he was offside. Christie can handle the puck. Fires it to length, but no problem there. It's one of those arts in the games that's starting to disappear a little bit right now, isn't it? Oh, the trapezoid has messed everything up for goaltenders. I'd like to see that moved out of the game. I mean, I really don't think there's that much of a, an advantage to have the trapezoid in. Guys will handle the puck, or they won't handle the puck. See a little bit more creativity from a guy like Christie could maybe help the offensive side. Everyone's complaining about the amount of goals being scored in the NHL. Platt turns the puck over. Here they come. Generals Ian Schultz trying to move it in front. He's got Snatter going to the goal. And he gets tied up by Platt. Snatter's lost his stick. Moore gets knocked over. Platt back out now. One on one against Craig on the far left wing. Craig angles him perfectly into the corner. It's rimmed around near side. Dudar runs into Schultz. Schultz continues on with it though. Has Schneider with him. Schultz shoots and he missed. Moore holding up there with Dudar. This allows Smith. Ooh, took a check there from Schultz. Dudar up to the red line. Dances by Rigby. To Patin. Back to Dudar. Dudar in close quarters. Feeds into the corner. Patin. Wanted to go to the line, stolen back, and the Generals have it three on two. Rigby with Todd. Robertson's going to the net. Shot from Todd and a stop from Steve Christie. Generals still looking to equalize. Right now, the Southeast Prairie Thunder have the lead, courtesy of that guy. Long history in the game of hockey. We talked to him after 40 minutes of play, and it goes all the way back for Terry Yake, who played over 400 games in the National Hockey League. And this is one that he remembers as a Whaler beating Don Beaupre. Well, Donnie Beaupre, very aggressive on the play, leaves it wide open. But look at him through the neutral zone. Oh. I think that's Mario Goslin, wasn't it? But wow, he's a he was a, a terrific player. I got to play with him in St. Louis, so I guarantee you he was either in that game or on the bench for that one. But what a great career Terry Yake had. One of six former Western Hockey League Wheat Kings that are involved in this game today. And Congratulations to Kelly McCrimmon and his hockey club. They advanced last night to the next round of the Western League postseason. Great tradition of hockey at all levels here in the province of Manitoba. The excitement of the Jets coming back five years ago. The Manitoba Moose now in the American Hockey League in Winnipeg. And here's a penalty coming up and a power play. And boy, as we get down and close to the midway point here in the third period, all of these two-minute infractions becoming extremely pivotal. Well, it is, and Ostring's going to draw the penalty from Crowley. Crowley gets a little bit aggressive here in the corner. Battling for position now right here, a little cross-check. That push right there is going to cost them the penalty. I thought it was a pretty good, honest battle between two combatants, but Ostring goes down, and... Now they're off to the kill. Carter Rigby had a first period power play goal for the Generals. This is their fourth opportunity of the day. One for three so far. Looking to tie for the third time in the game. Let's see if they can do it right here. Deck fakes his shot. Bailey's got it. Left wing circle. Plays it down into the corner. Schultz trying to get away from his check. Still working the puck. Schultz out in front. Off the stick. They score. For the third time, we've got a brand new game here in Steinbeck. It's 3-3. Brian, it's been a game of bounces all afternoon long. This one is a seam play that gets redirected by the own defender. Good work here down low. Going to win a physical battle. Get available. And now he just looks for Schneider on the back door. The stick redirects between 
the wickets of Christie. No chance on the play as he's trying to get available. What a job coming out of the corner by Ian Schultz. It was able to throw it in front. And it hits Patton's stick and slides right in. And we've got a brand new game, like you said, at 3-3. Second of the tournament for Ian Schultz. Played in the East Coast League this year with the Allen Americans. He's had a lot of hockey already to be played, trying to cap off his skating season with a national championship at the senior men's level. Take another peek at the goal. You win the physical battle down low, and he's just trying to find Schneider on the back door. Right there, Patton steps in. It's the right play. It's just an unfortunate bounce because he's trying to break up that seam play. That's what you do when you're the offside forward, but hits his stick, slides between the wickets of Christie, and we got a 3-3 game. Generals now two for four on the power play today, and they're looking for their first lead of the game now. Craig shot off the leg of Dittmer. Comes to McCauley. Long breakout attempt. Didn't work out. They'll try it again. Butlin just feeds it in from the red line. Heemskirk, the goalie, leaves it now as we are past the midway point of the third period. 3-3 free, free the score. And holding on to the puck is Christie, and he had Stefanisha knife him right in the glove hand with the blade of his stick, and that's obviously going to draw the temper of the Southeast Prairie Thunder captain right there, Ryan Bonney. What a finish. Stay with us here at Steinbeck. Steve Christie has faced 27 shots so far in the game here today in a 3-3 affair, and Jamie McLennan, he had to deal with even a little bit more. Well, he handles the puck so well. He's looking to get that puck up ice, and the last second, Stefanishin comes in and gives him a little love tap. We'll call it a love tap, but I would have Clearly reacted not the way that Christie did. He's pretty calm and cool. I like that, though. Good poise in the net because it's a championship game. It's 3-3. So you would have really turned this I don't know into an I interesting one. Who knows what I would have done. <laughs> talk, know, I, I talk a big game, but I, would have, I don't know what I would have done. We know you wouldn't have worn the half-shield helmet that the backups yes, are wearing the, right now. The mascot head, for sure. Jesse Todd's got one goal already today, and he'll move the puck for the Bentley Generals in around the sidewall. Agnew's able to relieve pressure and get it out to the red line. Ostring had it go by him. Yake looking for Limpright, slashing at the puck. Hayes will get it up to Todd. Todd will slow things down a little bit here, and the captain, Don Morrison, circles back for his partner. Long clear in from center ice by Hayes. Can they hold it in at the blue line? No, they can't. And Morrison's got to go back here. He's got Wild right in behind him. Kalen Wild will have fresh legs after serving the 10-minute misconduct and the two-minute minor back in the second period for the headshot. So maybe we'll see a little bit more here of number 12 as the game goes on for the Southeast Prairie Thunder. Looks like we're going to have offsetting penalties in the neutral zone. The Schultz from Bentley was going at it. Tim Plett, Ian Schultz will sit down across from our vantage point here today. A little jousting and it's gonna happen there. Like we've said all season long, that's a interference in a dive. I believe that's what's being called. Something different from NHL rules that we're used to watching here on TSN, of course. Here in this Hockey Canada event, we will remain five on five. Patin deals it down low to Dudar. Trying to get outside on Kalinchuk. Back to the point, just keeping it in. The blue line is Forsythe. Shot floated by Crowley, goes wide of the goal. Kalinchuk up to Stefanishin. He's got Schneider with him. Moves it down, Eric Schneider. Steve Christie's gonna come out of the goal. Open net, and they can't find Bailey. Oh, that was a close one. Dudar for Wild, and he shot it wide, far side. Navigating his way up to the red line is Stefanishin, but no further. Dudar had the puck go by him. Deck forces the Thunder to get back onto the right half of the ice. Christie comes out of his goal. He may get a message here pretty soon to stay in the blue paint. <laughs> well, when you get a goaltender that active, 
they're going to make a mistake once in a while. You just don't want it to be one that cost you. Especially with how small the surface is here again. It's about 15 feet shy in length. It's about three feet shy in width. Everything moves quick. McLeod had the puck go off Callen. McCauley knocked over by McLeod. Both of those events away from the puck carrier. Rob Smith moving it up. Dittmer just in front of the Bentley bench here. Handled by Thurston. Couldn't get it to Huxley. And Adam Huxley will lift it over the heads of Smith and Robertson goes in after the puck. They're going to call it icing, though. He was shy of the red line. We talked about Steve Christie being active, handling the puck, and one almost comes back to bite him. It's the, the right play, a little reverse play, but he doesn't get enough of it. It's a good read by Schneider to break that up. And he tries to pop it right out front. Dangerous play, but sometimes, like you say, it comes back to bite you a little bit. 3-3 the score. The Generals have tied with a power play goal off the stick of Ian Schultz here midway through the third period. Every time Southeast has scored, they've been able to answer back. Curtis Ostring can't keep possession of the puck now. Rob Smith has it for Agnew. Agnew to Yake. Lost it there at the blue line. Ostring trying to come in. Gets around Crowley. Still with it and then pocket pick from behind by Agnew. Limpright's knocked over by Ostring, and those players will head off on a line change. That'll date back to their junior days when they were Pats and Warriors in the Western League. Morrison looking to get outside on Crowley. Gets the puck in behind the goal. Crowley got it from him there as he was locked up by Forsep. Dudar playing it now to Patin. That goes over the stick of Wild. Thurston retreating for the puck. Stefanishin watching from the doorstep there. Centering feed right on, and Plett. Got it to Patin, who stopped by Hemskirk. We remain equal at three. Steph Patin couldn't quite get that one. Steph Patton's going to get a terrific grade A opportunity in the offensive zone. And it's good work on the forecheck here by Wild to turn that puck over. Wins that battle, throws it right out, and it's a one timer. Hemskirk gets enough of it. As he squeezes between the arm and the body, controls the rebound, but that's a real great A opportunity from that home plate area at 3-3. Patton was frustrated after the play as he looked to the skies, but he got all of it, but it's a solid save by Heemskirk. He's been able to stop 30 of 33 to this point. Looking for his first Allen Cup championship. He was not the goalie a year ago when they dropped a 2-0 decision in Clarenville. Craig holding on now, playing it out. Generals on the forecheck. Wild unable to keep it in. He knocked over Hayes. And from long distance, Heemskirk will block her that one down for Craig. In behind his goal to deck. Looking for Schneider on the left wing. Schneider playing it up to neutral ice. Pickpocketed again by Wild. He had to wait for Cowan to get onside. This results in an opportunity here for Bentley. And Schneider's pass misses. Bailey. Dittmer with two first period goals. Shoots an eye high. And that one's snared by Heemskirk. Strong rush. Puck's going to get pushed wide. And Heemskirk makes a good save again. Turned over at the blue line. And then Dittmer's just going to throw it. Try and elevate it. Get it over that shoulder of Heemskirk, but he's in good position. Top of his crease, rips it out of the air, makes it look easy. Under five minutes remaining in this 2016 Allen Cup Championship. Skating out now, the Generals come three on three. McLeod dealing it in. Robertson takes the big bounce off. Puck out in front, and no black jerseys were there. McCauley leaves it for Butland. Tetro, quickly to Dittmer. He's got McCauley, who's got room. McCauley to the net. Oh, and he runs hard into the side of the goal. And he's slow to get up on a collision with Morrison. Wow, what a strong play to the net. You see McCauley shaking off the effects of running into that post, but it's a 
Good exit play out of the zone. Tries to take it to his backhand and charge the net. He gets cut off by Morrison. Strong defensive play, physical. He ends up running into the post and knocking it off the moorings, but Morrison closes, closes on the angle, forces him wide, and McCauley unable to convert. And it was terrific work in the defensive zone. Play with a guy named Mike Commodore in Calgary. Yes. With crazy red hair, love him. Lovable guy. He would advance the puck so well. His first pass was as good as anybody that I played with and reminded me of that type of defensive play to help advance that puck through the neutral zone. Moore wins the faceoff. Generals looking for their first lead of the game. Rigby unable to clear. Limpright gets it down to Yates. Held up there by Thurston. Chipped off the side wall. Tetro's gonna skate back here as Stefanishin battles with him inside the Southeast zone. Matt Stefanishin, six goals this week, none yet today. Long wrist shot, bounces wide into the corner. Butlin, Stefanishin knocks him over. Stefanishin keeps it in. Here's Moore, dealing it down low. Christie's gonna come out of his net. Agnew banking it, Stefanishin can't hold the line and Limpright will come in two on two with Yake. Angle down and behind the goal by Thurston. Three and a half to go in regulation time. Moore will play it in deep. Christie comes out of his goal. Couple of times here now in the third period, Christie remains active. Patin sends it rink wide for Dudar. Dudar knocked over. Robertson backhands it for Craig. Craig's got Todd there. That one went over his stick. Force that shot, didn't get through. Patin plays it down and behind the goal for Dudar. To the line, Forsyth shoots, that one's blocked by Todd. Knocked his stick out of his hands, gathers it back, and he'll hold up play along the side boards. Dudar leads it, close to the shot, blocked out in front, and the Generals have it. Graham Craig has to have about eight blocked shots here in this hockey game today. Big man, six foot five, over 200 pounds. He's been good at fronting pucks, and Keep it in the front. Now, it's the difference between blocking them and screening your goaltender. He makes sure that he gets all of it. Patin failed to get it out. Morrison keeps it in. Dudar in behind his goal. Generals looking to get a line change here with two and a half to go in regulation. Dudar is going to circle back with Bailey all over him. Crowley as an outlet will help out. Curry Thunder need to get a change in that the Generals were able to just get. Crowley's gonna snap it off the boards to Dittmer at center. In across the blue line, that at the skates of Cowan. Turned back ahead by Schultz. Schneider is with him, Bailey as well. The three players up front here for the Generals. Bailey, tight turn to get around Cowan. Set it up, Schultz shoots, stop! Christie, the glove save! Oh, oh. With a minute 54 remaining. What a glove save here by Steve Christie as he rips it out of the air. Good offensive zone. Push right here, turns the corner. Schultz is gonna get available. It takes it off his left skate, pops it to his forehand, and he wires this, and Steve Christie in good position, rips it out of the air. A little Statue of Liberty, let the crowd know he makes that terrific save. Unable to hold the puck in is Moore. McCauley now with three points in the game, couldn't continue with the puck on his stick. Generals looking to get it out. Dittmer keeps the pressure on. Dittmer shoots, pad saved by Heemskirk. 90 seconds remaining here in the third period. 3-3 the score. Four goals, they were split in the opening period. Both clubs have got one here in the final 20 minutes. Morrison, left wing, pass comes out to center ice now. Huxley just avoids it, check as Tetro at him in the trolley tracks. Morrison, rink wide. Generals looking to get one more chance here. Fans may be getting a little bit of free hockey in this 2016 championship. Bonus coverage, we'll call it. Absolutely. Limpright into the zone. Yake trying to get around Craig. Deck is there. Puck got stopped. Deck will come out with it now. And it's a three on two. Moore stood up at the blue line, though. Tetro played it perfectly in front of his teammates. Crowley dragging it up, he's all by himself. One on three, shoots to the blocker, saved by Heemskirk. Moore slowing it down. 
Backhands for Stefanishin. Up to the blue line. Forsyth over to Crowley. Crowley to Dudar. Dudar. Stick check there on the line by Robertson. Patin into the final 20 seconds. In around behind the general's goal. Safely covering up here is Craig. He'll come over. He'll get the puck up. This will go all the way down, and this is going to be icing. How about this? With 8.5 seconds remaining, there will be a face-off in the general's ice. A couple good opportunities here. Dane Crowley's going to jump up into the play. A little outside, inside move, and for, forces Heemskirk to make a terrific blocker save as Crowley decided to go for it himself. It was a one-on-three situation. He gets a good look at the net about it. Agnew to take the face off here against Moore. Face off to the glove side of Heemskirk. And now Moore is going to get waved out. And we'll see Robertson take it against Mark Agnew. Curry Thunder when it's shot by Butland, kicked out by Heemskirk. They drew up the play they wanted, they got a chance. But Thomas Heemskirk is able to make a game saver at this point, and 60 minutes has settled nothing so far in 2016. What a left pad save here. You win a draw, a little D to D play, a little redirection off his own defender as well. Heemskirk is in good position to flash that left pad, and now we're going into overtime as both teams will look for a reset and come out and try and win the Allen Cup. We will have a 15 minute intermission and then we'll continue to play 20 minute periods until somebody scores a goal. 4-3 will be the final, but we don't know for who yet. Hi everyone, Mark Rowe inside the Sports Center newsroom. We will get you back to Steinbeck for overtime of the Allen Cup final in a couple of minutes. But let's get you up to date with the NBA playoffs as the Toronto Raptors open up their series with the Indiana Pacers. Toronto coming off their best regular season in franchise history, but looking to exercise some of those demons after losing to Washington last year and Brooklyn two years ago. Pick it up in the second quarter. Ty Lawson with a crossover. Biz Mac Biombo. He had two blocks and eight boards and does his best Dikembe Mutombo impression there. Meantime, Paul George just two for nine in the half. He misses and it leads to the fast break. Kyle Lowry feeding Patrick Patterson. Other way, CJ Miles, open floor, throws it down, wraps up by two at the half. Now third quarter, Lowry and Jonas Valanciunas run the pick and roll. Strong finish, extra hang on the rim. JV, 12 points and a playoff franchise record, 19 boards. Later on, DeMar DeRozan driving, lots of contact, but no call. DeRozan just five for 19 for 14 points. Now later, it's George looking to find some rhythm. The tough three falls, he had 17 points in the third quarter alone. Then the Raptors down by four. Damari Carroll to DeRozan, DeRozan. Huge reverse slam. The Raptors 0-7 in game ones in franchise history. They're down by three after three. Fourth quarter, Lowry goes into traffic. Can't get it to go. He went three for 13 from the floor. Then George heating up down the stretch. He drains the three. George shot just 31% against the Raptors this season, but he was feeling it on Saturday. He goes right at DeRozan for the step back jumper. Then the defense converges on George, who promptly feeds Miles Turner. And then in crunch time, it's George at it again. A little showdown here against Amari DeCaro, their elite defender. And George put him on ice. Deep freeze, an eight point Pacer lead. The Pacer George with 33 points. The Raps lose their seven straight postseason game. 190 is your final. The Raptors falling to one and eight all time in game ones in postseason play. Among current franchises, only the Timberwolves have a worse record at one and nine. Paul George had 27 points in the second half. It's the fifth time in 55 playoff games that he has scored 25 points and a half. 
Now, one positive, Jonas Valanciunas, who set that Raptors franchise record for rebounds in a playoff game with 19. He's also the first player in the NBA with 15 rebounds in the first half of a playoff game since Carlos Boozer had 16 for the Jazz back in April of 2009. Here's DeRozan on what adjustments need to be made for game two. I just miss shots. I, I never had a problem with, you know, a guy guarding me. I always take on the challenge. But like you said, you know, I can't have a great shooting night every single night, but I'm pretty sure I won't go five for 19 again. No need to hang your head. Um, they won the first game. That's all that matters. It's the first team gets to four. So it's a long series, and uh, we, gonna, we need them. Um, we can't go uh, far without those guys. So I think the biggest thing for us is just keep giving them confidence. You know, they'll show up. They're all stars. Today, there was too many, uh, you know, mental mistakes that you know we did, uh, especially on the defensive end, which I felt like you know when we had them, uh, we, we we didn't put them away. We got to find a way uh, to trust each other and then play under pressure. It's, it seems like you know we're playing with very too much pressure and this and that. But again, this, this is just the first game. Uh, we we'll learn from it. We're good, man. You know, it's one game. You know, it's, it's not last year. We're, we're very positive. We're very, you know, confident. You know, just got to go out here and, and do what we know how to do. So in a battle of superstars, it was all Paul George who outscored Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan combined in game one. George is the fifth different player to score 30 points in a playoff game against the Raptors, joining Vince Carter, Allen Iverson, Joe Johnson, and Jerry Stackhouse, while Lowry managed just 11 points for Toronto, while DeRozan had 14. George had 17 points in the third quarter, the second most in any playoff quarter in his career. Now, we'll have more Sports Center coming up after the hockey game, but when we return after the break, it's overtime of the Allen Cup Final. Well, it's supper time here in Steinbeck, but no one can go home yet. This 2016 Allen Cup Championship requires a little bit of extra work, just like it did seven years ago when these teams played. The Generals were able to win that game by a 4-3 final, so we'll see what happens. And, well, Jamie McLennan, here's what's happened so far tonight. Well, no pizzas being thrown up like we just saw, but some strong work on the power play. Jam the net, it ends up going over the left shoulder of Heemskirk, again, now it's Bentley throwing it towards the net. Rigby in front, it hits his left shin pad and eludes Christie. Another power play goal here. Strong work in the neutral zone, gonna kick it wide. And it's a seam play that ends up hitting Hayes' skate sliding into the open net. So now you've got three power play goals. Here's an even strength one. Good defensive play. Three on two turns into a two on one and Todd's gonna just Find it between the wickets of Christie. Good work to make it 2-2. And then in the th third period, as there was no scoring in the second, a little turnover here offensively. Take it hard to the net. And Cowan's going to finish it up before the net gets dislodged. To get back onto a power play situation for Bentley. They throw it back door and it hits Patan's patent stick slides between the wickets and that leaves us here at 3-3 heading into overtime. Well the Southeast Prairie Thunder have been able to get the go-ahead goal. These Bentley Generals continue to battle on and the schedule will be interesting here as to how long we continue to play. Generals only had to play three games to get here. Southeast played four including one that started at 10 p.m. As we welcome you back into Steinbeck, Brian Munns, Jamie McLennan, our entire TSN team as we have extra hockey for you here on this night to decide the 2016 Allen Cup Championship. There's the goals we saw back into the third period. And of course the big power play equalizer by Ian Schultz was one that the Generals were looking for. They played catch up all night. They have chased the game a little bit and you take a look at the shots on goal as the Thunder has outshot the Generals 37 to 28. Brian, you talked about maybe the Bentley Generals being a little bit fresher heading into this period because they played one less game. Graham Craig has control right now for the Generals. They lost to this Southeast team last season. 2 0 was the final. Seven years ago, the Generals beat them. So you can somewhat call this the rubber match. 
Forsyth will lift it over everybody's head and he put it into the low roof here inside the T.G. Smith Arena. And we'll see a face-off back in the southeast end of the ice. Brian, that shot from the point, that was a seeing eye shot here. You've got a lot of bodies. Watch Christie try and track this. This goes straight through. He has no idea where that is. I mean, we had a terrific vantage point of that. If that hits the net, that goes in because that actually hit a stanchion out back and popped right out front. But dangerous shot from the point. You're going to see the game-winning goal probably be a, a little bit of a moldy goal, a seeing eye shot or hit a skate. We've seen a lot of different bounces in tonight's game. Crowley working for the puck at his own end. Limp right will put it onto the stick of Yake. Yake looking to get outside on Stefanish and he'll hesitate. Play it over to Crowley. Crowley checked by Moore. Got the puck to Limp right and he'll get it in around Craig. Dex skating back for it. Agnew right behind him. Limp right down into the corner. Fished it free. Sean Limp right near side. Trying to skate away from three general players. Bentley's got it now and Stefanish. Hits his man at the line. Rigby right on goal. Kicked away by Christie. Moore looks to get around Forsyth. He's taken down. Yako on the end wall. Checked by Rigby. Yake still controlling. Yake and Moore along with Forsyth right now. Two of the Southeast Prairie Thunder. Yake goes down. And as he lays on top of the puck, the referee will stop playing. That's just a veteran move right there it by the 47-year-old. A little tired, so you... Fall down, make sure that you can get the whistle. This, Steve Christie forced to make a, a really good save here. A little stop back play through traffic, right pad. Good rebound control. He's at the top of his crease. A solid, solid play. And here you've got some tired veterans, 47 years old. Terry Yake battling away. He's not going to get up from that play. He wants to stay down and get the whistle. Robertson off the faceoff. Went forward with it, down in behind the net. Now it's Callan Wild up the other way for the Thunder. High back end, up to Plett, looking for Patin. Taken away by Huxley. To the front of the goal, Morrison is there, banks it off ahead, and Huxley will get it out to center ice. Robertson trying to play it at the blue line. Huxley gets tripped up by Wild. Retreating back now is Hayes. He and his defense partner, Don Morrison, watching. And play is stopped back on the, are they gonna call it icing? Yes, they will. Yeah, a little bit of a live sweep. They. That puck just barely made it over the line. The crowd actually had a little reaction <laughs> thinking that was not an icing, but it's the right call. Just got there, took a little while to get there across the line. Face off coming up here in the Southeast Prairie Thunder zone. Generals have been successful here on the first couple of face offs of the overtime period. Ostring gets knocked over, takes a shot from Tetro. And now it's Cowan, uh, along with McCauley, two on three, shot from center, blockered down by Heemskirk. McCauley for Cowan, Dittmer was there. Dittmer had the two first period goals for the Thunder, his third and fourth of the tournament. Skating out for Bentley now is Ostring, with Todd, Todd checked hard by Tetro. McCauley holding up with his man, the assistant captain, Ostring. McCauley joins in as well, five players trying to work this thing free. Still in the skates, a sixth player will come out with it now, and it's Butlin for Dittmer. Dittmer into enemy ice. Gets it down in deep, Butlin. Cowan is there, Thurston holds him up. Eric Schnatter clears it over everybody, and the soft little flip is controlled now by Dane Crowley. The 29-year-old gave it away. Here's Schultz, he's got Schnatter in front, tried for the third man on the play, and Kyle Bailey, and he whiffed on it. Three on two, Southeast. Dudar hits the line. Limpright is there. Forsyth as well. The return pass, and it goes out of the reach of Riley Dudar. Schneider will slow it down now in front of the benches as he slowly gets it in. That was a strong defensive play by Brett Thurston on the back door. Dudar had a lane there. May have had a forehand one-timer, but Thurston broke up the play. Graham Craig lost it at the blue line. Generals will get on side. This allows Forseth to get it off to Crowley. Crowley's pass out of the reach of Dudar. As Deck goes back for it, Dudar is right there. He'll move it off to Craig. Craig skating with it here. Takes a body check from Patin. Plett over skated it. Bonnie off the boards for Plett. Heemskirk's going to come out of his goal. Heemskirk with a backhand. Plett's there, shooting, blocked by Moore. 
Flat down in behind the net. Has Patin in front. Wild as well. To the line. Rob Smith couldn't get it through traffic. Tight turn by Craig. Pressured by Patin. Deck controlling for the Generals. Missed Rigby on the feed. This one will not go far enough for icing. As Rob Smith will try and turn it up in a hurry. Put it into the skates of Wild. It's kicked to Platt. Platt locked up there. Cowan chopped it free from Deck. Out at center ice, wristed right back in by Smith. Heemsker leaving it for Hayes. Both teams not sitting back here. Going after it, aggressive play. You have to respect that. As they're thinking maybe as the overturn get, goes on, the legs will get a little heavier. Mental mistakes will come, so they want to try and go after it right away. Hayes' backhand goes outside the line. Puck is shot in deep here as Dipper goes after it. Deck one on one against him in the corner. will take him down. Huxley looking for the reception. He's got it. Flips it in there around Butlin. Christie, the goaltender, will set it up for Tetro. On the far wing, Robertson trying to work it. Now he's got Huxley from McLeod. That goes off the side of the net. They jam away. And falling down, Christie's got it. <laughs> this was a dangerous play. It was from a bad angle, but it ends up hitting the side of the net. And then Christie has some issues with it a little bit. Right here, backhand, side of the net. Now it pops behind him. Oh. Presence of mind, though, not panic and knock it in his own net. It's just a sharp play. You can see Christie. He's got his right pad outside the, the post, and it slides back between his legs, and then he's able to corral the rebound. Ostring, Todd, Robertson, the three on the ice right now for the Generals. Trying to force it through, they can't. And Agnew will skate back out the other way. Agnew held up by Hayes. Ostring to the blue line, knocked out by Crowley. Generals had to get onside, Morrison will play it down. Dane Crowley was the hero in the semifinal yesterday with the goal four minutes to go, eliminating the Grand Falls Windsor Cataracts. Terry Akel circle his goal. Good lead feed out to center ice and limp right. Limp right one on three, waiting for Agnew to try and get net front. Got a run out of real estate though by Hayes. Backhanded off the boards, Ostring to Bailey. Into the wheels of Schultz, he'll shoot that one. Caroms off of Crowley wide. Yake passes it off to Bonnie. Now for Forsyth. His pass goes to the middle and limp right. Turns back in his own zone. There's a couple of jerseys there that are black all over him in Schneider and Schultz. And as the puck goes away from those two players, the Generals will try and get somewhat of a line change in here. Eric Schneider with Schultz in front, sent it through the blue crease just wide. Dudar to Patin. Up to the line now and wild. They get a bounce, but it didn't continue. Forward motion. Patan will hold it in for Wild. Dudar works it away from them. Out in front for Patan, and that one was out of his reach. Slapping it down the ice is Bailey, and it'll go all the way down. The linesman hurled himself out of the way, and everybody is okay. <laughs> Did he bail out, but he should bail out. That was just the right play. He was going to take that in the ribs. That would not have been pretty. Here's a look at oh, it. Right look off. out. Well, yeah, good play there. Smart play. We Sometimes we get on the linesman and the ref sometimes, but boy, you have to you have to be sharp in situations, and he's able to bail out at the right time to get out of the way. Kelsey Mahoney is the one that's still happy to be watching this game with us tonight. He and Daryl Serminski are on the lines. Kyle Scrivens, Trevor Pellick working the game as referees. Out to center ice, Tetro. Shot in by Butlin. Set up by Heemskirk. Starting to open up a little bit more, Jamie, as you alluded to early on here in the overtime period. Long attempt, wide of the goal. Working for it down low now is Deck. Opportunity in the slots, definition just missed. Oh, the best chance he's had in this game was an inch away from ending it. Boy, it jumped up on his stick at the last second. He had a clear lane to the blocker side. It's a turnover behind the net. Good work by Deck. Then it's popped right out to him. It may have had a little deflection off a stick right there. You see the reach in. I believe that was Dittmer that tried to 
disrupt that pass at the last sec second and Stefan Ishton ends up firing it wide on the blocker side. Agnew is able to roll it down in deep. Morrison in behind his goal. Left wing side kept in at the blue line. Crowley shoots that one, bounces over to Forseth. In behind the goal and Plett trying the wrap around. He just missed on it. General skating out now, three on two. McLeod trying to get back here as Platt calling for it. Left wing, Morrison over to McLeod. He's unable to load it up. Forsyth will move it as far as the Bentley blue line, but no further. Cleared ahead by Huxley. Christie's going to come out of his goal. He wrists it ahead, and it went over limp right stick. And this will not be icing call. Play will continue on. Craig trying to do it himself here. Hits the binders. Down to Ostring. Ostring assisted on the game-winning goal seven years ago when these clubs played here in the 4-3 Bentley victory. Jesse Todd trying to work it here. One-on-one -on -one against Forsyth, and he's got it. Back to the line, and Craig. Craig shoots, missed, off the end wall. Pad save, and then a 10 to the glove of Christie. Nice save here by Steve Christie, but this is a more dangerous shot than we would expect. It ends up going wide. It's going to go back to the point, Craig. Now watch, comes off the boards, right out, hits his left skate. Now it's a smart little play. He's looking for the bank play off of Christie. Little chip play right there. If you can hit the body, that may drop down and go into the net. Christie has the presence of mind to rip it out of the air. Off the draw, Craig Schultz shoots. And again, it's into the midsection. Up high, he's able to take it into the shoulder and hold on. 4-2 now. The Generals are out shooting the Prairie Thunder here in overtime. And Steve Christie with a, another smart play here. You win a draw. Craig's going to kick it wide. Now get available. Right hand a shot. Schultz throws it towards the net. He knows he has traffic in front. Christie stays up on the play, takes it in the midsection, and controls the rebound. Bailey to face off against Cowan. Generals win it cleanly. Bailey got it to Schneider. Schneider's shot off the leg of Bonnie. Schultz is there, rubbed out by Cowan. Schultz still with it right now. Threw it to the front of the net. Chance and getting cross crease again. Steve Christie has made some big time saves here in overtime. Deck trying to wind it up. Gets knocked off balance. Shot from a sharp angle. Christie keeps that right pad down. Doesn't know where it is. In front. Sprawling save and clearing it out of the danger Whoa. zone as Rob Smith down the surface. Boy, is Steve Christie putting a show on here. A couple, three, three massive saves to keep the Prairie Thunder in this game as Bentley has had a push. And it's been the Steve Christie show early on here in overtime. He Throw led. the puck towards the net. Look at this save. He gets enough of it with his body to keep it out. And then here off the post, you're gonna wrap it around, try and come out front with it. The two pad stack at the last second. Just great work. Led the Allen Cup in minutes played, the goals against and the save percentage were the best statistics this week. The angles is the big thing that's been impressive for me as to how they haven't been able to bank anything off them yet. Yeah, his post play. So he, the way his positioning of his skates. Here's Limp right long distance. Getting a piece of that one is Heemskirk with his blocker. Yake holds it in left wing. Now he loses it as Stefanishin gets it up to the blue line. He's knocked over and play will continue on. He looked back. He thought he was going to get a penalty and we continue five on five. Kalinchuk slaps it around the boards in his own end. Furry Thunder making a line change. Bentley does now as well. Christie out of his goal, swings it off here to Yake. With Limp right and Dudar on the ice. Here's Yake, sends it to the front of the net, and Heemskirk will hold on as we are past the midway point now of overtime in this 3-3 game. Thomas Heemskirk is gonna make an outstanding save. He's been at the other end watching Christie make these saves. Watch the redirection right there in the slot. He pops that out with the blocker and then Definition looking for a penalty on this play. It's a little push from behind. He's fine with it, and the ref is in good position to make a, a good non-call. Deckel circle his goal. 
Play it off the boards, it'll go all the way down and we'll do it right back again inside the Bentley Generals face-off circle. It's been a, a real good pace period so far in the first 11 minutes or close to 11 minutes of the overtime. Bentley's had the advantage. It's been the Steve Christie show, but as I pointed out, Thomas Heemskirk forced to make an outstanding save last play to keep Bentley in it. Had a good look there at Nathan Deck, who's now 26 years old. Graduate of four years in the Western League with the PA Raiders. Crowley from the midpoint, didn't get it through. We've seen a lot of Deck on the surface here today. He's been the busiest general on the blue line for sure. Crowley, tight turn, got away from Huxley, who blew a tire. Here they come, Dudar trying to get around Craig. Takes it down into the corner, he'll stop and set up. Patin then gave it away. McLeod worked it. In off the equipment of Huxley. Wild will play it. Over to Dudar in front of the general's bench. He'll sauce it out. They intended for Crowley, and he just missed him. Now Crowley will take it. Play is there. Wild into the corner. Trying to get away here from Sean Robertson. Wild in behind the goal. Back to the blue line. Ryan Bonney can't get it through traffic. Todd to the southeast line, flips it up. Ostring with a backhand, that one's turned away. Todd on top of it again for Ostring. Back to the blue line, Morrison. Let it go down to Todd. Has Robertson open here on the back door. Todd still with it, swings it in front. That one's blocked in front. Wild will get it up and then Cowan will shoot it down. Will that have enough for icing? No, they wave it off. The puck just reached the end line, but Linesman says no. Cowan waits for his mates to get on side. Now he'll bring it in for McCauley. Trying to get around his check. Here's McCauley to win it. No, he can't get it done. What a chance there for Blair McCauley. <laughs> what a save by Thomas Heemskirk as well. Dittmer wrists it quickly, and Heemskirk gets his blocker on that one. Dittmer trying to dance out in front. He shoots, stop his mate. Goalie's down, and it's cleared away by Schultz. What a game we've seen here today in Steinbeck. Glad to have you with us. Long shot by Schultz, missed by a mile. And as we get some line changes, we have an odd man rush. McCauley comes in, cuts to the net, couldn't finish a shot. Limp right, and Cowan. Moore will take it away for the Generals. This is Graham Craig. Craig stick checked away by Tetro. Up ahead, here's a lead feed, and Agnew's got a little bit of room. Everybody else converges as Agnew will take it down into the near side. Checked by Deck. Moore rims it around the boards, kept in. Crowley's blast stopped there by Heemskirk. Now moving out to center ice, Schneider gets taken down by Forsythe as they lock legs. Craig skating back with Plett right there. Plett knocks him down. He shoots from a sharp angle wide of the goal. Agnew trailed there on a hard hit by Stefanishin. Robertson slaps it off the boards and he put it into the bench of the Southeast Prairie Thunder. And both teams, I think, very happy here to get a face off. <laughs> a little reset. A couple great rushes here by Blair McCauley. Going to get an outside step. Take it to his forehand, has a lane, tries to go five hole on Heemskirk. In the secondary opportunity, head up the whole way. You go outside, inside on Morrison, but a good defensive play at the last second to break that up as McCauley had, was dangerous on both opportunities. Thurston plays it for Kalinchuk. There's it off the wall. Bonnie skating back for it here. Goes all the way, and they're going to call this icing. Ryan Tobler not really thrilled about the call on the Bentley bench. He thought Bonnie could have made a play on it. A lot of times the, the defenders going back at the play will take a different angle, kind of slow themselves up a little bit, make it look good. You got to sell it right here. The little hop. Yeah, yeah, little hop, little hesitation. Generals get it off the draw. Bonnie, Yake, Walker out there. And once again, Thomas Heemskirk. Here in his first Allen Cup championship is not going to take any chances in around his goal. Stopped 28 yesterday in their semifinal win over the Shelbrook Elks. Yake to face off against Robertson. 
Prairie Thunder get it. Back to Smith. He missed glove side. Todd run into by Walker. Thurston is there. Walker comes out of the pile. Looking for Yake. Thurston checks him. Walker against Robertson. Walker still with it. Slashing of the puck is Dudar. Todd will take it. He'll airmail it out. Smith will send it right back into the offensive zone. And retreating back now is Scott Kalinchuk. Quickly to Todd. He gets stick checked by Patin. Kalinchuk up the gut. Too far there for Robertson. He gets knocked down by Butlin. Here's a steal now. Generals try to work it. Robertson is there along with Ostring, and they are unable to make a passing play. Now it's stolen away there. Craig waiting for his mates to get on side, but they couldn't get a line change in quick enough as the players' bench is in deep. And a slow change there may have stopped an opportunity for a goal. Well, it's been physical, and Robertson tries to sell a, a high hit. He went down in a heap. Comes across, and right here, he believes. I think he's trying to sell a high stick on that play, but ref wasn't biting. Again, the refs haven't called anything in this extra time, but both teams have played a pretty physical period, but haven't crossed the line. Patin gets it over, sharp angled shot, and again, Heemskirk will hold on to it. Prairie Thunder have now put over 40 shots in on the Bentley Generals netminder tonight. It's a bad angle shot here by Wild, but Heemskirk slows it down, rips it out of the air. He's in good position, and when you're in overtime, throw everything to the net. Could be a bad rebound. It could be a redirection that gets you the winner. Off the draw, McCauley couldn't get there in time. Played ahead here by Schultz. Schultz trying to sidestep his man, unable to. Dittmer moves it over now. Looking to play it in front for Bailey. Can't. And out with it is McCauley. Hits the general's line, shoots, and it goes off his stick over the glass and into the safety netting. Schultz was, Ian Schultz was looking for a call there, and he had a one on one situation and didn't get the call, and he stayed down. And you see there, McCauley, who's been dangerous all game long, three assists tonight, and I pointed out a couple real nice rushes and one real good opportunity here in overtime that was shut down by Heemskirk. McCauley had two game-winning goals during round-robin play this week. The only player to win a pair of games for his hockey club, so we'll see if he can get the hat-trick in that department here. Stephanishin shoots from a difficult angle, and Christie's able to get a piece of that one. Morrison to Hayes. Through a maze, he scores! The Bentley Generals have done it! Found the five hole on Steve Christie. For the seventh time in franchise history, the Bentley Generals are Allen Cup champions. Brian, this is a shot from the point, but I think this may have a, a slight redirection on Steve Christie and it ends up going on the blocker side. And as you see, the Bentley Generals fired up and Obviously, the Prairie Thunder, the agony of, agony of defeat, but it's a hard-fought battle. And 15-47 of the overtime period. He's gonna go back to the point, a tough angle shot. Now a little D-to-D -D play. Watch the traffic in front, right there. That's Rigby. With the redirection, Carter Rigby, 80, number 89 in front, shot from the point right there, that redirection, left-handed shot. No chance for Christie on the play. And you can see how fired up he is. He knows he's in terrific position. He's able to tip it right by and deliver the Allen Cup for the Bentley Generals. One of the youngest players in the tournament, the 22-year-old, who was a Cougar, a Rocket, and a Bronco in the Western Hockey League, is able to win it for the Generals. The Bentley Generals are Allen Cup champions, and the celebration is on. And how about that? For the second time in seven years, they've been able to win it over Steinbeck by a 4-3 final. And as you talked about it, Jamie, 
Rob Smith and the Prairie Thunder put on a show, but it's the Generals who win. The 2016 Allen Cup from Steinbach, Manitoba is brought to you by Esso. The Esso brand has fueled Canada's love for hockey for over 30 years. By RBC, let nothing get in the way of your someday. By Nike, official gear of Canada's national hockey team. And by TELUS, the biggest fans of Canada's biggest game. The 2016 Allen Cup from Steinbach, Manitoba is brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. What a week it's been here in Steinbach. Carter Rigby on the 37th shot is able to wrap it up and the Bentley Generals are celebrating a national championship. It's their third in franchise history, the seventh for the province of Alberta. The captain is ready to enjoy something here, Jamie McLennan, that they've been hoping for. It's a perfect week for the Bentley Generals. They go 4-0, and and we talked to him at one point. Brent Thurston, and now Don Morrison, who's playing in his fourth Allen Cup championship, gets a chance to touch the hardware. Pretty exciting, and like I say, both sides hard-fought battle, and Bentley comes out on top this year, and last year it was the Prairie Thunder, so. Pretty fired up, pretty, no matter what level you're at, you get to raise the trophy, it's pretty exciting. First time in this hockey game they've led. When you look at it, the <laughs> Southeast Prairie Thunder scored the game's opening goal on the power play. Dittmer had a couple in the opening frame, as a matter of fact. But this hockey club would not say die. And at the end of the game, they're able to pull out a 4-3 final score victory. What a week it's been. A lot of fun. Appreciate this, Jamie. It's, uh, been a week that a lot of people are going to remember. Absolutely, and pleasure to work with you and look forward to next year's Allen Cup. A lot of excitement, a lot of plays in the offensive zone. Saw a lot of goaltending as well and physicality. For Jamie McLennan and our entire TSN team, this is Brian Munn saying so long from Seinbeck. Sports Center starts now.